Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another uh, amazing, interesting uh, webinar by the London NSC UK branch. I'm uh, Sandra Popola. I'm your, I would say, your co host today. Well, I'm not going to say much because we have the man in the house, the one and only the chairman. And I mean the chairman of the, of the first NSC branch to be uh, opened up or integrated outside Nigeria, our engineer, Tio Bosun Odulami. Thank you very much, Dr. P. Uh, it's just a wonderful feeling to be here again. Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, honorables. Uh, it's just um, another beautiful Saturday together. And um, I just want to say it's not going to be just any other Saturday because we've got a very, uh, a very, very eminent personality in our midst today to share the day with us. Uh, but before we even go on, let's just observe the couple of uh, a couple of uh, protocols that we have in the house. Uh, we want everyone to be muted unless when it's time for participation in terms of um, uh, maybe um, you want to ask any questions. Uh, if during the seminar, sorry, during the webinar, you need to make any comments, just put up your hand and then we definitely acknowledge your presence. Uh, this is just let, let us know definitely we're going to have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar by the host, or by the, sorry, by, by, by our guest. And also while this webinar is going on, if you want to just drop in one question or comment, let us know you can use the chat box as well. Uh, last but not the least for health and safety and um, data protection purposes, this presentation uh, definitely is being recorded. So let us know if you don't want your picture or your voice to be recorded and then we can make that um, available. However, uh, no slides will be made available or no original copy of the slides will be made available to anyone after the webinar. So uh, yeah, so let's keep the webinar going. But before we start, let me just tell you a little bit about our NSC London UK branch. Hallelujah. NSC London UK branch. Well, that branch, the branch was inaugurated about two, two and a half years ago. And uh, we've been kicking on and we've been doing also all our programs together. And I'm so definitely uh, acknowledgement to be going to eminent personalities in the house for today. You know, who have really brought this branch to where it is today. And I want to acknowledge uh, the personalities of the NSC president, uh, engineer Mohammed Babaganan, FNSC. I want to also acknowledge the support and the presence of the executive committee as well and council of members of the NSC uh, who have been represented uh, one way or the other during this webinar. Uh, also, definitely, we cannot, we cannot forget the support of all the chairmen of all NSC branches. Uh, who may be represented as well during this webinar. Uh, we also definitely can overlook our fellow engineers, our associates, our affiliates, architects, and members and colleagues in the industry who have been one way or the other, uh, who have been supporting us as we go along for the past two and a half years. And also definitely, if there's anyone that I must have missed out, I really want to acknowledge your presence and to let you know that we appreciate what you have been doing for the branch so far. And um, uh, today, definitely, it's going to be another opportunity for us to meet an eminent personality in the industry. This time around, I'm coming all the way from Nigeria. But um, the main idea is not to showcase maybe the, the guest, but the idea is for us to let, us, mm -hmm. let you know exactly what we as engineers are doing in the diaspora, most importantly in London, UK. And um, like Dr. Popola said earlier on, we are not just maybe uh, uh, just a one man head or someone just kind of doing it for the purpose of that. I've got colleagues around me supporting the move uh, to kind of change the terrain of um, engineering perception, both here and in Nigeria. Uh, as you know, as you have just, um, uh, I've just been introduced, uh, I have the mantle of chairing this executive here. And uh, my name is Theophilus Olatu Bosun Odunlami, so Theo Bosun Odunlami for short. Sure. And um, I've got my able assistant chairman, Engineer Chinedu Ayazu. I have Dr. Engineer Mrs. May Sule as our general secretary. 
I have engineer Emmanuel Ajayi as our financial secretary and treasurer. And I have um, our eminent Dr. Chief Oksan De Popola as our director of publicity and our ex official member and um, director. And as you can see, definitely we have a position still waiting to be filled for the assistant general secretary. So we, we're looking forward to people who want to more or less partner with us to move this train faster, better, more effective, and even move it ahead. And why do we need people on board? Why do we need to get ourselves together to kind of gel, to make progress? Because we want to fulfill our mission. And as we know, our mission definitely is short and straightforward. You must have been hearing loads and loads of times that we talk out on this webinar. The missions are just to contribute uh, to the development of engineering and to support up, up and coming engineering innovations and uh, initiatives to build a better Nigeria for ourselves. And also we want to enhance the connectivity between Nigerian engineers and other key players in the construction and infrastructure development all over the world this time around. We want to have a task transfer of technology from what we have gained over here in the diaspora to what is happening right there in, um, in Nigeria. And that is why our webinars are not only based about people who are locally, uh, who are local experts here, yeah? but also people that are really on the ground in Nigeria doing stuff. We want to build a closer and mutually beneficial links in every area of the construction spectrum. We're talking about business, we're talking about financing, we're talking about maybe infrastructure development, we're talking about creative initiative, we're talking about innovation, technological know-how, we're talking about development, new things coming on board. The idea is for us to use our experience to do things better, faster, and cheaper. To almost 27. Materials. How do we do this? We have been there for about a couple of years now, two and a half years going, organizing seminars and even webinars like this. Pre-COVID, we have been involved in active participation on construction visits. Uh, we have been able to organize and facilitate research uh, initiatives, even for younger engineers through STEM. And there are so many, so many discussions that we have heard on how we can move uh, the technological advancement of the country forward. And as I'm talking at, uh, with you right now, as at the moment, we have been able to initiate a pocket and a couple of other programs on the, on the ground, on paper, whereby we are getting involved in to put in our cheap and piece of advice to see how we can move the country forward. And definitely, we cannot overemphasize the fact that we here in London, uh, London branch, uh, U London branch in UK, we are not resting on our own. We are moving forward. We are getting ourselves known. We are getting ourselves partnered with other people, and that is why we are having this opportunity of webinars to, ex to kind of more or less kind of exercise our freedom of knowledge sharing at this particular period of COVID and see what we can contribute to develop the country. And the guest that we have today is going to do just that because of his um, experience. Also, we want to see how we can bring in the young engineers. And that is where you come in as seasoned engineers and mentors, right? We, we, we want to make sure definitely we are able to transfer what we have gained over the, the hundreds of years coupled together to people coming on board. We want to build a capacity in the engineering sector for other engineers coming in. Now we want to make engineering attractive again to the younger people coming in. And how do we do that? By being creative, by being innovative, by bringing out initiative, by using all the wealth of diaspora and experience that we've got to bring it on board. And I believe definitely we will do it when we work together. So we want you on board. We want you to get yourself registered with us. We want you to partner with us in any capacity. We want to hear from you. We want to know how much you can contribute to us. And I believe definitely the sky is the limit. And we are getting results. We are not where we were two years ago. And as you can see, even despite the COVID, our timetable is full till the year with webinars. And we can see eminent personalities that we've got there. And definitely, you know, before we've had so many people coming on board to come and give us lectures. We had uh, Dr. Larry. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the special, ad special advisor to the Lagos State Government on infrastructures. Uh, we've had, uh, we had one about um, the anchoring the last time. 
And you can see definitely this year, because we have been so proficient in what we are doing, we've got a timetable filled up till the end of December for webinars. So I'm saying colleagues, your Saturdays are already booked already. So there's nowhere you are going but to be with us. And that is exactly where we start. Now, what are we doing next as a, as a, as a branch? NSC London UK branch, the next chapter in our movement is for us to get ourselves registered as a UK charity organization that we broaden our scope to do better things in both here and in, and, and in Nigeria. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a logo already, which you can see there flashing on our screen. Uh, definitely we are putting together uh, a monthly e-news and this particular e-flyers, we need to want to be, it could be more or less kind of maybe uh, constructive in a very, very special way. In a special way whereby it's not going to be only contributions from the executives that want to see on our e-flyers or new newsletters. We want you to come up with ideas, send us your contributions as well. Send us your ideas as well. And we can put it in our newsletters. I mean, no matter what you've got to contribute, definitely we can take it on board. So that is where you come in. So it's going to be participatory. So we need ideas from you for us to populate and send out as our, as our e-flyers. We want to impact engineering education in Nigeria. We have slated some meetings this year, if possible, and COVID permitting, that we're going to be putting a couple of schools in Nigeria to kind of maybe ginger up the STEM uh, structure they've got there. We want to see how we can begin to kind of use gift aid from the UK government through our registration as a charity organization. Not only are we getting there, getting the gift aid from the UK, we'll be able to sensitize the UK government that we as a charity, we are interested in developing our homeland Nigeria. Then we'll be able to ask, we'll ask have, have access to any kind of support that the UK is ready to give to us uh, in terms of that. And uh, as we are definitely, we want to see how we can participate in projects as well, in advisory positions. Uh, I was in the meeting of the chairman of NSC's lab about two weeks ago, and we are talking about a couple of things in terms of the real project. And those are the things that we in the diaspora can come on board to kind of initiate that particular cooperation and synergy between yeah. us and those in Nigeria. And we know definitely we've got our bank accounts ready, but with our bank accounts, definitely we can't leave it open because we can't do all these things without funding. And that is why we want you to come on board as registered members. Uh, we have sent forms to us on our, uh, on our um, WhatsApp, WhatsApp group for us, for us to have members coming on board to join us and partner with us. It's not, it's not something that we want us to say is onerous or quite difficult to do, you know, because we need the funding and we have been getting results from our membership and people that have been paying their dues so far. And you can see the benefits of becoming a member of um, NSC London UK branch. You know, you get free webinars like this. We're not even charging you to register on uh, Eventbrite. Just log in and then you are in. In uh, you'll be able to advertise your company on our e-news and e-flyers as the time comes, you know. And then definitely because you are now a member of Nigerian Sort of Engineers and we are a registered charity within UK and we have links in Nigeria and all over the world, You'll be able to advert, you'll be able to kind of give you insight into contracts and job jobs openings as it may be required for you on uh, on our on our platform you know and as a member definitely you have access to uh, maybe having mentors you want to more or less kind of uh, maybe uh, bring on board or you want to be a, a mentor yourself or you can mm -hmm. also see definitely I want to be a, a mentee I need someone to mentor yes. me as well mm -hmm. and you can even use that opportunity to even progress your academic career because this platform is full of people who are seasoned in their own areas of, uh, of engineering. And other things that you can gain as a member, definitely, by joining us is investment and sponsorship opportunities. Yes, I can guarantee that. Investment and sponsorship opportunities because we have been linking up with so many partners right now. And I tell you, definitely, it can only get better want to make sure definitely we organize site visits. There are so many iconic iconic uh, construction sites that even people like myself really want to be there. Uh, definitely, I, I, was in, I was involved in the uh, Terminal 2 building from beginning to the end, so I can always get 
people to come and say, let's have a tour of Terminal 2 building. Not to see how people go on the train on the on their on their planes, but to see mm -hmm. the back house, back house of everything in terms of mechanical engineering and all the rest of it. And at the same time, definitely we can come on board and say, yes, that is exactly what we can do from ourselves to ourselves, within ourselves, to help the motherland. So what we are now saying definitely, please come on board. Join us as a body of um, engineers in the UK, and let's see what we can give back to the motherland. And because of the taste of what we have today, because of the kind of pedigree of the person we have today, talking about what is happening over there in, in, in Lagos, I want us to begin to see how we can contribute technically to that development. And I believe definitely we can do it. Thank you, thank you very much. So I'm gonna hand over to uh, Dr. Popola now to give us uh, a brief lowdown of um, our today's guest. Have a wonderful webinar session. God bless. Thank you, thank you very much, my chairman, Engineer Adulami. It's wonderful to be here. As you can see, I'm right broadcasting here from my village. It's amazing what technology can do for you. So this is a, a in front of a museum right here in my village in Kwara State, and I'm talking to all of you all over the world. Today, today is an amazing day, as my chairman have said. We have somebody in the, in the house that's gonna to speak to us about 40, 45 minutes, and we're gonna bombard him with questions. These are people that make things happen in the name of Dr. Frederick Oladende, the, the Honorable Commissioner for Transport Lagos State Government. His topic today, before I even said his topic, let, let me just tell you a little bit about him. Dr. Freddie has worked in transport industry for over 20 years. And on his appointment as commissioner in tra for transportation in 2019, he was the director, corporate and investment planning in Lagos State Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, also known as LAMATA. Remember those LAMATA buses, those new buses? This is the man, this is the brain behind it. And he did his post from September 2016 to August 2019. As director, he has led a planning strategy for the future transport needs of Lagos State, coordinating the implementation of transport scheme initiatives and securing investment for the provision of transport infrastructure. We can't, we're not talk, talk, talk. We actually, is actually delivering and bringing investment in. So he began his career as a senior transport consultant in the transaction advisory role at Oscar Weber Consulting in London. Uh, my chairman, can you please unmute people, please? Sorry, can you mute people? No mute, right? Uh, Oscar Weber Consulting in London, United Kingdom. And in the year 2000, he joined the Department of Transport UK as a senior transport planning advisor. A lot of our colleagues here went from Nigeria to, sorry, from UK to Nigeria to do a lot of these things. One of them was uh, uh, Sheyi Shijuade, who became the MD of uh, Nigeria for many, many years. But our speaker, he, when he was working for, for, for the, uh, for the uh, Department of Transport in the UK, he was responsible for advising the British minister, no, not just um, uh, prime minister, British minister, of transport, of the impact of various transport schemes and policy uh, and policy options. So he's already been granted in doing this work for, a, for his adopted country. So for him to bring it to Nigeria is a, is a, is a dodo, and he's doing it very well. Dr. Olade, they joined Lamata in 2008 through Nigeria Infrastructure Advisory Facility called NIAF. Again, a lot of our members here went through Nigeria through NIAF and DVED and all that, which is NIAF in stand for Department for International Development, DVED, funded program as a transport planning expert and technocrat, technical advisor, and he's still sticking to that job. He's not a politician, he's a technocrat, heading the transport planning unit of the organization and led a team of consultants in developing a 20 year strategic transport master plan. STMP for Lagos Lagos City. It's not one year, it's not two years, it's not five years and one year, 10 agenda, 20 years of planning high ed. And there's a right good master plan strategies written down that every successful government will have to follow. Dr. Oladen, the old, I mean, all this in his own, where do you think, what, what makes him to, to be in this position? Where does he get his brain from? 
I tell you, he holds a PhD in transport planning, modeling, and engineering. Guess from where? In Trinity College, London. He's the fellow of the Chuck Institute of Logistics and Transport UK, where they are planning, and they're not just planning now, they're planning her egg. Okay? Therefore, he's one of us, but just happened to be exported, I would say, Brexited to Nigeria. And we need more people like him in Nigeria to make the country great. So I'm not going to, uh, I mean, I've got, I've got about three pages of his uh, biography here. So I'm only going to read uh, a, a page there for you. If you want to know more about him, when he starts to speak, write your question down and you find that it be more about him. But his topic today, uh, Dr. Olade, if you mm -hmm. don't mind, start sharing. His topic today is on trans strategic uh, master, transport master plan for Lagos State, exploring transportation beyond roads. Yeah, we all think transportation is all about road. It's going to explore transportation beyond roads. So, Dr. Laden, the floor is yours. Please, everybody, keep calm, keep quiet, mute yourself, write your question down, text us in the chat, whatever way you want to communicate your, your question after. Let, let's enjoy this presentation. It's amazing. Dr. Laden, take, take it away. Okay. So can I just get a response if you can hear me, please? Yes, very clearly, and we can see your slides too. Okay, that's Loud great. Loud and clear. Okay, that's great. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I almost fell off my chair when uh, Professor Popola was uh, introducing me. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is about transportation. I mean, okay, it's going to be the strategic transport master plan, and uh, we're looking at uh, transportation beyond road. And when I say transportation beyond road, I'm talking about beyond private cars. So um, let me just, if I can just uh, get this screen to move. Okay, great. So the content of my presentation. I will talk a little bit about the characteristics of Lagos State so that you have you appreciate the difficulty uh, that we're facing in actually implementing uh, a smart uh, uh, transportation network. I'll talk about the challenges and impact. I'll then talk about the strategic transport master plan. Now, I'm also going to talk about what we're doing. So it's not just about planning, but it's about implementing um, where we are at at the moment and then how various uh, private sector uh, and engineers can contribute. And then I'll then conclude. So just a, a little bit about Lagos State for those of you who have been uh, in Lagos for a while. Uh, Lagos has, I mean, currently has a population of 22 million people. Um, I was uh, at a presentation last week uh, by PwC in the UK, and they projected uh, the population of Lagos to be 89 million by 2100. So if you look at Lagos, uh, which is the smallest state um, in Nigeria, it's about 0.4% in land mass of Nigeria. Uh, and you look at where you're gonna put 89 million people, you begin to wonder, so how are we gonna cope? Now with 23 and uh, 22 million people, um, we're already struggling. So um, we need to look beyond trans I mean, beyond roads to see how we can move people from one point to the other. Lagos in population is also bigger than 23 countries uh, in Africa. So Lagos is a country within a country. Uh, it's still the, even though it's no more the capital of Lagos, it's still the economic hub. Uh, it's the place where people do business. It's the place where people want to come to. It's a place where uh, we create more employment than anywhere else um, in Nigeria. It contributes to 25% of Nigeria's GDP. Uh, so it's very important. It's a very important state. And uh, in terms of the economy, its economy is larger than uh, countries like Ivory Coast, Ghana, Madagascar, uh, et cetera. And 45% of the skilled workers are in Nigeria actually work in Lagos. So that makes Lagos a very important state and a state where we can afford to make mistakes. So let's begin to appreciate uh, some of the challenges that we're facing um, in Lagos. Let me start with the overview. 
So in Nigeria, on average, we have 16 vehicles to a kilometer of road. Now, when you then narrow it down to Lagos, you have 226 cars to a kilometer of road and it's still growing. So in fact, Lagos State is, I mean, when you look at the traffic in Lagos, it's 10 times more than anywhere um, in Nigeria. Uh, as small as Nigeria is, it's surprising to know that the high capacity vehicles, are, and I'm talking about the public transport, is only about 1,500. We should be, uh, we should have more of that. But unfortunately, we have uh, very few, and it's something that we're looking into. We have more than 75,000 downfalls. These are the yellow buses uh, for those who know uh, Lagos, uh, Rickety buses. Um, and it's no secret that this government uh, and myself want to get rid of downfalls um, in Lagos. Uh, we cater for more than 12 million public transport passengers, and I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when I move to a couple I mean couple of slides. And we have 1.6 million registered cars. I think there are more. Uh, in Lagos, uh, because we have cars that drive from Ogun State, etc., that pass through Lagos um, on a daily basis. We're dealing with more than two million cars, but we have 1.6 million uh, registered cars uh, on our database. So when you look at the challenges, Lagos is a place that people want to come to. Uh, you hear Boko Haram, you hear the security challenges uh, across the, uh, the, the state, and everybody wants to come to Lagos. And based on our current statistics, 89 people uh, is added to the population of Lagos every hour. That is close to a million people every year. And so um, in the next 10 years, we'll be adding 10 million more people to the population of Lagos. That shows you the stress that Lagos is going through in terms of uh, infrastructure. Now, the pressure on the existing uh, transport infrastructure is huge. Um, I don't need, need to even uh, dwell too much on that. And uh, one thing I want to focus on is the inadequate regulatory public transport framework. So I've just said to you that we have 75,000 downfalls. Uh, those downfalls cater for more than 50% of the trips that we generate in Lagos. And uh, we have to do something about that. We have limited alternative to vehicular transportation in Lagos. 90, over 90% of our trips are by road. Uh, we don't have a, a working rail system. Water transportation is pretty poor. And uh, everybody just fly the road, uh, hoping that they'll get to their destination as quickly as possible. And uh, to, com I mean, to complicate that or to compound the problem uh, of Lagos, we have uh, what we call uh, inadequate traffic management, something that we're dealing with. And, I'll talk to you about that. So what's the impact on the economy? So every day we lose about $7.5 million uh, uh, in terms of lost productivity. Um, a lot of uh, companies are relocating to uh, places like Ghana because it's easier to get the uh, workforce and it's easier to, uh, to actually get to their uh, place of work. Uh, there is a decreased economy of agglomeration. And what do I mean by that? So, for example, in great cities like London, when you go to Barcelona, so um, companies that make car, when they locate somewhere, um, other companies that make tires, companies that make bat uh, batteries, etc., will want to co uh, locate with them. So they all form a, uh, you know, like a cluster. It is pretty diff uh, difficult to do that in Lagos because we don't attract, I mean, the economy is not competitive enough. Uh, people can't get uh, products to these places as quickly as possible. And that's something that we've got to uh, look into. Uh, the vehicular, uh, uh, vehicle operating cost in, in Lagos is quite high. Uh, the roads uh, in some places are bad. And obviously, I mean, spending hours in congestion, so you're born in diesel. Um, Quality of life is reduced because four or five hours of your time a day is spent in congestion rather than with your loved ones or doing something more productive. Uh, productive. And then the what? accident rate is quite high. So let me just summarize that. So I just said uh, we cater for over 24 million trips um, in Lagos, of which 40% are walk trips. Now, these people who are walking, it's not that they want to walk, but Transportation is quite expensive, and in most cases, maybe it's not accessible. Uh, over 90% of our trips are by road, I've said that. And when you look at the 
demography of the trips that we cater for. So 69% of our trips are catered for by downfall. These are the yellow rickety buses. Only 21% are, are car vehicles. And this 21%, when you look at the other pie chart on the, uh, on the right, uh, actually uh, take up about 65% of our road space, while downfalls take up 28%. So can you imagine if we begin to ramp uh, uh, the private cars up, uh, what that would do to our network? So this is just, uh, this gives you an understanding of the demand for transportation um, in Lagos. Now, in terms of the supply side, so what does this translate into? So we have over 7,000 kilometers of road. In the morning, uh, during the peak hour, uh, we average about 18 kilometers per hour, which is quite slow. In a competitive economy, you want to be averaging about 30 kilometers and above. Guys, we seem to have lost connection with uh, Dr. Olade in day. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Oh, it's back, it's back. That's true, that's okay. We lost no, connection. Someone... The, last thing, the last thing you said was about the 75 kilometers of road. Oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. Let me just go back. So, yes, so 7,000 kilometers of road. So, on average, we, I mean, we, we do about 18, kilo, uh, 18 kilometers per hour. That's the average speed in the morning, which is quite slow. And uh, in a competitive economy, you should be doing above 30 kilometers per hour. So that's something that we need to do something about. Okay, so in pictorial view, I mean, we started addressing some of this, but I just want to show you some of the issues that we're dealing with. So the first picture shows Allen Avenue. Um, most of our roundabouts are saturated and um, uh, we need to increase the capacity. So when you have clustered roundabouts like this, it's not even good for your bus public transport. It makes public transport unattractive and we're trying to make public transport attractive. So I'll tell you what we're doing about the roundabouts. You can see the road, you can see Maryland, and then uh, it, when you come down, you can see Oshudi, what it used to be in the past, uh, a cool bridge with trailers going to a papa. And then uh, in places where we even do traffic management, I mean, there's a lot of frictions, uh, especially where cars have to merge and diverge. And that's something that uh, we need to touch on. So these are the pictures just to show you um, some of the uh, issues that we're having to deal with in Lagos. Um, again, Eco Bridge, then we have the issue of Okada, this is the motorcycles uh, who have taken over the state, uh, something that we're doing some, I mean, we're doing something about that. And then the last uh, slide on this, uh, you can see the state of our water transport, even though it's improved tremendously, and I'll show you what we've done. Uh, this is a Papa, this is Wemco Road, so these are the issues that we're dealing with. And the, the, the problem here is that if we do not do anything, if we just leave the whole network uh, the way it is right now, by 2040, we'll be averaging about nine kilometers per hour. And in places like Kurudu and Leki, actually, it will be faster to walk than to drive your car. And so uh, with the huge population coming in, it's obvious that we need to find a sustainable way of moving people from one point to the other. And which is where the issue of uh, the master plan comes in. But one thing is very clear, it's quite clear in Lagos, we cannot build ourselves out of congestion because we built more roads and people just continue to buy more cars. People continue to come into Lagos and people continue to congest the whole place. So we will build road where we feel that it would add uh, value to the economy of Lagos State, but we're not going to build a road as a result of solving congestion. We cannot build ourselves out of congestion and we have to find a sustainable way of moving people from one point to the other in Lagos. So what's our vision in Lagos? Our vision is to provide a multimodal, uh, a modern integrated multimodal public transport that makes Lagos State an African uh, model mega city. So what do we mean by that? When you look at the way we travel in Lagos, a lot of our people are captive to either the downfalls or captive to their cars. People do not have options. We need to begin to give people options so that when one of the modes uh, go down, uh, they have options of using other modes. And that's where we need to open up our waterways. We need to develop our rail and then other modes of moving people from one point to the other. 
and it needs to be integrated so that people can combine the various modes of transport and then you know get to their destination as easily as possible. So what's the strategic direction? The first, uh, the first thing we need to tackle is integration and integration comes in five folds. So we need to look at location integration and that means that every community has to be within 500 meters of a station. It could be a I mean, water transport station, it could be a rail station, it could be a bus station, but they need to get access. We need to improve access uh, for everybody in Lagos. The timetable has to be integrated in such a way that when you board uh, one mode and you want to change to another mode, you don't have to wait 45 to 50 minutes before you can change over. Uh, the maximum that we're looking at is five minutes. And that's why we have an institution like Lamata in place that is able to bring all this together and then draw up a, 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 a unified timetable for all the modes of transport in an integrated fashion. Ticketing integration, something that I'm going to talk about, is very important. So in Lagos, we have developed our own common ticketing system where you have one ticket that can you can use across the various modes of transport. Information is imp important. If you don't know Lagos well, you get lost. But with the kind of information that we're providing, people can move seamlessly from one point to the other. And then, I mean, you know, get information on their mobile phone and then look at the various modes they can use to get to their various de uh, destination. And the most important one is the land use and transport integration. So we're talking to our city planners. We're making sure that when we develop rail, the corridor, uh, we attract the private sector to co-locate uh, within the corridor so that people can get access uh, to those uh, destinations from the rail station. So we're doing what we, what we call transit-oriented development at, around the station so that uh, we can cut down um, the, the time to travel from your point of disembarkment to your final destination. Most importantly, we need to make public transport uh, affordable. Whether you like it or not, about 50% of the population of Lagos spend 40% of their income on transportation. Transportation is quite expensive in Lagos, given the low income um, that we have in, in Lagos. So we need to make it attractive. We need to cut it down to about 20%, uh, ideally about 15%. We need to bring in the private sector to participate in the development of infrastructure and the provision of services. Um, government um, uh, can no longer, I mean, we only have limited for resources and it's not ideal for government to provide everything. Government should stick to regulating transport, let the private sector run and uh, you know, drive uh, transportation, let them drive the infrastructure, the operations. And we're looking to develop new uh, projects such as the BLT project, I'll talk about the rail project, water transport project, and then strategic roads like the Port Mainland Bridge, which is important in connecting um, Lagos and then developing the ring road that would uh, ensure that uh, if you don't, if you, if you don't, I mean, if you can't, I mean, if you're not close to your destination, you don't have to come into inner Lagos. So what does the uh, strategic transport master plan, I mean, what does it entail? So for example, we're looking at uh, developing a full integrated mass rapid transit that consists of six rail lines, uh, one monorail, and I'll show you uh, what we're doing there. Uh, 14 BLT, that's the bus rapid transit. Uh, we need to increase the number of mass rapid transit in Lagos uh, so that we can get rid of downfalls. So one mass rapid transit bus can consume about five downfalls and it makes sense to get rid of the downfalls and then introduce these uh, massive uh, uh, rapid transit vehicles. Uh, we're looking to uh, reform the bus sector, something I'll be talking about uh, uh, in this presentation. We have developed over 20 water uh, routes. Uh, we are using technology to integrate most of these modes of transport. I've talked about the uh, common ticketing system, and I'll, I'll dwell more on that uh, when, I, when I move forward. And uh, we have, uh, when you go to our, uh, our bus stations, you will see uh, the, the bus unit that tells you, that gives you information on when the next bus is going to come. Uh, and then other information such as uh, what is happening on the road. And that's important for people who are moving across Lagos. And then uh, we're promoting non-motorized transport. We have uh, 
develop the non motorized transport policy. Uh, we're encouraging cycling, and then most importantly, we want to bring walking back so that people can walk to the station and people can trek and then, you know, just have a good time in Lagos rather than downfalls taking over our walkways, people selling on our walkways, uh, which makes uh, transportation very difficult um, in Lagos today. So this is a schematic view of the six rail lines and the monorail. Um, the blue color is uh, the rail line that uh, Lagos State has embarked on, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So that goes from Marina all the way to Okokomaiku, uh, taking care of the western and uh, part of uh, Lagos. And then we have the red line from Agbadu all the way to Marina, uh, taking care of the uh, northern part, uh, bringing people from Agbadu, that's uh, somewhere in Ogo State, because a lot, of a lot of our people also live in Ogo State and work in Lagos State. And then the other rail lines take care of uh, the other parts of Lagos. So the green line takes care of Lekki, the yellow line takes care of uh, Alimosho. The purple line takes care of uh, Redeem, going through Alimosho all the way to uh, the Lagos State University and uh, all the way to Bojo. And then the monorail uh, looks at uh, how we can ease traffic uh, in Ikurudu, uh, sorry, in Ikui as well as Victoria Island. So let me just uh, dwell into some specifics here. So I said that uh, the Lagos State government has uh, embarked on the blue line. Uh, the blue line is a 27 kilometer rail line from Okokomaiko to Marina. Uh, we have divided that project into two. So the first phase is from mile two all the way to Marina. And um, in terms of the fixed infrastructure, I think we're 95% complete on that. So we're looking for concessionaires that will buy rolling stock and then begin to operate uh, that section of the rail line uh, by next year. That's from mile two to um, Marina. This rail line will take about 450,000 people out in a day, and you can imagine the sheer, I mean, pressure that it will take off our roads. So stations that already exist include National Theatre, uh, Igomu, Alaba, Mile 2, and then the rest will follow um, later. Most importantly, uh, the Blue Line would integrate um, uh, with other modes of transport in Mile 2. So in Mile 2, we have the jetty, the Mile 2 jetty, and we also have the BLT uh, corridor that will be connecting Mile 2. So people can get down there and then connect to other modes of transport to complete their, uh, their journey to their final destination. On the right is also the connection to Marina, which is quite uh, an interesting project. So we're developing um, huge interchange in Marina as well as uh, in Mile 2, uh, where the blue line and the red, red line would, uh, would terminate. And there you have uh, the BLT, the option of the BLT. And then at the back of this uh, complex is uh, the option of water transportation uh, in Marina. And um, currently, these are existing infrastructure that we have developed. Uh, we have uh, invested in one, uh, that's uh, the four in one um, rolling stock, which we're going to use for the testing and commissioning by the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, so we're not waiting until we complete the whole track from my Marina to Okokomaiko before we operate. So we would operate from my two to Marina and then we'll then uh, get a concessionaire to then develop from my two all the way to Okokomaiko. So these are some of the infrastructures on ground. And uh, uh, by next year, uh, we're going into operations. The red line is a very interesting project. So you'll be aware that the federal government has started developing the, its federal line from Lagos, uh, starting from Ibutimeta all the way to Ibado. Uh, they've gone really far. And what Lagos was supposed to do was to build beside it. But we had a very interesting meeting uh, about two years ago where we broke out the deal to share the track so that we can reduce the cost of developing uh, the red line. And in sharing the track, we will save about $1, uh, $1 billion. So we're going to be sharing the track with the federal government NRC uh, from Agbado all the way to Ibutimeta. And then we will then extend it from Ibutimeta all the way to Marina. 
So currently, we would extend it to Inbu, and we want to get uh, this section of the rail line operational also next year. So the federal government are developing trail, uh, trail stations, that's Agbadu, uh, Agege, as well as Ibutimeta. So Lagos State will now go ahead to now develop Iju, uh, Ikeja, um, Oshudi, Mushin, and Oyingbo. So that's what we'll be doing between now and third quarter of next year to make sure that we can then run intra-city uh, uh, rail transport, especially on the red line. Now, this is set to carry about 750,000 passengers. And again, just taking these off our roads uh, would, um, you know, would, would give a lot of relief to people on the road. Uh, just to uh, give you uh, a feel for the impact. So from Agbadu to Ebutimeta currently takes about two hours. And uh, once we're able to develop this rail line, it will take you less than 40 minutes. Uh, for the blue line, from mile two to marina takes also two hours. And with that line in place, it will take you about 27 minutes to actually uh, travel from marina, uh, from mile two to marina. So these are the kind of uh, investment and impact that we want to make um, in Lagos. Again, we're not just building the red line for building sake. It has to be connected because we have to connect every single area in Lagos. And so the red line at the Keja will connect with uh, the bus terminal, which I will also talk about, as well as the ocean interchange, which I'll talk about. So you can see that we're beginning to develop connectivity across the very, I mean, the network of Lagos that makes it uh, very easy for people to now move across Lagos. So that's with the, that's the rail done. And then um, over the next few years, so we have advertised the other five rail lines and we have interesting investors who want to take up the other lines. So the, the state government would uh, try and complete the red line and the blue line. And we have raised capital to finish that. Now, a lot of people will say that uh, we have been building the blue line for donkey years, uh, for over 10 years. But let me, let me make a, a point here. Lagos State is the only state or only city in the world that is developing its rail line without the intervention of the federal government. Rail lines across everywhere in the world is a federal project. But Lagos State cannot wait until the federal government gets its act together before we begin to move our people from one point to the other. So we have gone ahead to find creative ways of investing in our rail lines and ensuring that um, we do not, uh, we, we, we create an atmosphere where we can do business and be competitive with the rest of uh, the mega cities across the world. So um, that's why it's taking longer, but with what this current governor has done, I think the money is now available to finish that section of the blue line and the red line. Let me now move to the BLT. So we have 14 lines which we have planned and uh, the first line was implemented in 2008. Uh, that's the line from mile 12 all the way to Marina. Uh, it was opened in 2008, and then we extended it to Ikurudu in 2015. And then just last year, we launched the Oshudi to Abulegba BLT. So these are features of the new Oshudi to Abulegba uh, BLT that we launched last year. Um, from Oshudi to Abulia Egba, if you're driving, if you're using your car, it takes about two hours, but with the bus, it takes 35 minutes. And it's segregated, you don't have to compete with uh, uh, other cars uh, on the road, uh, and uh, it's very attractive for people to use. So these are other features of uh, the Oshudi to Abulia Egba BLT that we're doing. So let me now talk about the bus reform. Now, I've said that uh, we are looking to reform the bus sector and we need to get rid of the yellow buses because they're not conducive uh, for human beings. And uh, let me, let, let, I mean, let, let's say the truth about this here. So what we have done is to look at the number of routes that this down force uh, deploy. Uh, we discovered that they ply over 850 routes and we have been able to rationalize those routes to 424. 
And what we're doing is to now develop those routes, uh, make sure that we put uh, bus terminals, bus shelters, we're lane marking on the road, uh, provide places where people can wait, uh, develop uh, decent uh, bus stops, and then franchise them to different operators that our institution can regulate properly. So this is a map of what the Lagos bus network would look like. And uh, the objective of the bus reform is to provide a, com a comfortable and reliable bus service. So buses will be coming every three minutes, four minutes, and then you have the information system that tells you when the next bus will come. Uh, formalization of the operator. So we're moving away from where anybody can just buy it down for and then run anywhere to a place where we actually talk to operators who have experience and then we franchise that route to them. So the operators would have a minimum number of fleets before they can actually operate. And that way you get rid of uh, the one man business and then you train the drivers. There's a school that they have to go to. They have to be certified. Uh, you bring in the insurance. And so you're just, you know, just making the life of the people that work in this industry much more decent rather than what they're going through right now. We're improving the connectivity. So they will be connected to the very the mass rapid transit that we just talked about, enhance city life so that, um, you know, uh, even the ambience in Lagos can change. Uh, we need to reduce uh, environmental poll pollution. And as I've said, five, uh, one BLT bus will take out five downfalls. So we need to reduce the number of small cars on our road. And even, I mean, attract more people from their private vehicles to public transport. Improve safety. So most of these buses will have security on them. Uh, we're deploying intelligent tra uh, transport systems where we have a control room and then we can monitor the movement of each of these buses, and then we can track the drivers, we can talk to them from the control room and just make sure that people are safe. And uh, most importantly, consolidate uh, the most uh, duplicated, uh, duplicated uh, garages um, in Lagos. So for example, in, in Ikeja, there are about 15 garages. And you can, it, it's very difficult to know which one to go to unless you know where you're going. And what we want to do is to consolidate all of them, bring them into one mega uh, terminal station. And so people know where to, I mean, where, where to catch a bus and then from there, draw up a timetable of the various routes where they, can, they emanate to. So this is an example of uh, the bus terminal uh, in comparison to the garage uh, that we all used to, or that we all grew up with. So we're modernizing our bus terminals. Um, people can go in there, they buy their tickets. Uh, they can sit down and wait. And when it rains, you have a decent place where you can relax. And then you have uh, some coffee shops, um, et cetera. So this is what the internal view, and this is, uh, I mean, we've, we've built this already. So this is already operational. And you can see that this is uh, totally different from the motor garage that uh, we, we all grew up with, uh, where you have to, in fact, you, it, there's nowhere to hide when, it's, when it rains or even when it's sunny. This is a rainbow uh, that we launched, uh, we commissioned last year. Unfortunately, during the S, uh, NSAS, uh, some section of it were, were destroyed, but we are re renovating it back again. But this is a rainbow bus terminal. Uh, this is what the internal view looks like. You can see that it's very decent. So people can come in, sit down. Um, it has uh, a place where you can plug in your Wi-Fi, their shops. And it's just a decent way of traveling. You know, so you wait for the bus to come and then you can then go out and board the bus and then, um, and then um, you, you know, get to your destination. Now, um, in the pre there, there was a picture. There was a picture that I showed you that mm -hmm. had uh, a clusters of downfall. This is Ushudi as it is right now. So this is the interchange that has been developed, and this interchange. Uh, so there is one that linked to the BLT. That's the Ushudi to Abuja BLT. There is one that is designated for interstate, and then there is another one for intrastate. You can see that we have catered for all forms of bus transport here and you can see the layout 
and it's much more decent than what we uh, we have known Oshodi to be over the last 10 to 15 years. So these are the kind of uh, terminals that we are building uh, in Lagos uh, to make bus uh, uh, transportation more attractive. This is Ojota as it stands. This is the plan. And you can see that we started, we've embarked on, uh, uh, on the construction of uh, uh, Ojota. So it's not just a plan anymore. It is something that we're already implementing. This is Agege. This is what it used to be like. That we want. And these are some of the construction work that we're doing in Agege Iju Road. This is Nako. This is on your way to the airport. This is what it looks like. It's just a yard at the moment. This is the infrastructure that we want to put in there. And this is what it looks like right now. Um, so you can see that a lot of work is going into developing Nako so that people can get uh, to the the airport seamlessly. You don't have to have a car to go to the airport. Public transport will take you to the airport. And uh, by the time we finish the red line also, that will take you to the airport also. This is Aja, um, Aja town. So we're trying to develop a, a bus terminal there. Uh, this is the current uh, construction going on in Aja. So by the time we complete Aja, in fact, there are two terminals in Aja. Uh, one on each side of the expressway, uh, depending on where you're going, and so that we can clean up our jar and then we can make it a, a very decent place that people can go to, and then reduce congestion and then eliminate the yellow buses that park on the road and then cause congestion there. Now, this is, and I will talk a little bit about Maryland. So Maryland, we have done some uh, work in Maryland, and I'll, I mean, there are other slides that show what we've done. But this is uh, the existing uh, structure of Maryland, the one on top. And what we're trying to do is to, we've acquired two, uh, the two stations. For those of you who know Maryland, uh, the Owando station and the mobile filling station. We've acquired them, we've demolished them. And what we're trying to do is to develop a modern bus structure. And then we're gonna develop a sky, uh, skywalk uh, where people can, you know, depending on where you're going in Maryland, you can then descend and then continue towards your destination. And this is what it's going to look like. So the traffic management around there have been improved, but we are coming with this design just to uh, make uh, Maryland very iconic also. And so watch out for the space. Uh, Maryland is going to be somewhere where tourists would want to come to and take pictures and then, you know, uh, it's going to become an, another mega tourist attraction. In terms of uh, bus shelters, so you can see that we're bringing in bus shelters. We're not just developing bus shelters, we are creating labor also so that the buses can pull in and then pull out uh, rather than just stop on the road and then cause congestion. So people can stay underneath uh, the bus shelters uh, wait for the buses, there's, uh, the, the, the information as to when the next bus is going to come and then the number of the, uh, the, the number of the bar of that bus and then the destination of that bus. So all that information will be provided at the bus shelter. And uh, uh, so we, 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 we've embarked on 100, I think we've completed about 75 and uh, the rest will become, and there are more that uh, we will be developing across state. So these are other bus shelters that have been developed um, in Lagos. And then in terms of the kind of buses that uh, we are encouraging, so these are the buses that we currently have in Lagos. So the Lagos State Government uh, invested in 820 buses, so it's a combination of uh, 70 seaters and 32 seaters. So where the roads, uh, the network is uh, very tight, you would have the mini buses, and then where we have uh, ample space, especially with the uh, expressways, you have the big buses. And this is different from your BLT. So the BLT is, all, is also another shape, uh, which you're familiar with. And you can see that with this, bus transport in Lagos will begin to look more decent, it becomes more attractive. And then with the common ticketing system that we're bringing into, uh, into play, uh, it becomes more cheaper. And I'll talk a little bit about that also as I move along. Now, this is the last mile. And it's important to, to for, for us to understand the functions of the various layers of modes that we're bringing in. 
So the rail and the BLT will ply the major roads. These are mass movers. This, this, these modes of transport will move people in thousands. The next one is the, is the are these buses, which we call the feeder routes. Uh, they're called collectors. These are the ones that take you to your rail or take you to your BLTs. And then the last one uh, is the last mile. These are the ones that goes into your local community. These are the ones that would replace your Kada. These are the motorcycles as well as the Kekenape and the yellow buses. So these are the ones that take you out, uh, the, that goes into the community and bring you out to the road. They're 11 seaters. We have, you can see on the right, the validators. So even with the common ticketing system, you don't have to pay the driver. You just swipe in, get on the bus, and then it takes you to where the bigger buses are, and then that connects you to your rail, depending on where you're going. So there's a hierarchy uh, of uh, modes, and then they, uh, they have specific functions which they will, uh, they, which they will carry on, rather than the rat race that you see with the downvotes. Sometimes some of most come into your bedroom, and you wonder, I mean, uh, I mean, do you have a bus stop in front of your house or not? So these are the kind of, uh, these are the hierarchy, uh, the structure of public transport that we're bringing in. And we have uh, taken our time to divide Lagos into seven zones. And so every operator uh, will be uh, assigned a zone. And you will find out that the, 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 the buses, the, especially the last mile that run on, that, that operate in zone one cannot operate in zone two. So that way we have adequate number of buses for each zone. So you don't have to criss uh, crisscross uh, from one zone to the other. Uh, you, you must have a particular zone where, uh, where you originate from. And based on that, we're able to allocate uh, a, a route or franchise uh, routes to these different operators. So you can see that there's a level of organization that is going in, uh, in trying to ensure that uh, we provide a decent uh, means of transport. Uh, this is uh, the Calvary card which we launched uh, last year, uh, sometimes in September, uh, when we launched the BLT also. It's called the Calvary card, the Lagos State Calvary travel card. Uh, all you need to do is to load it and you can use it on any modes of travel, even including the water, water transport route, which I'll also talk about. So with this card, that's all you need. As long as you top it up, um, it would cut uh, the cost of transportation by 30%. It makes it more cheaper. And it, it also provides security because you don't have to carry money around. And uh, as long as you have your card topped up, uh, you, can, you can move across Lagos any time of the day. Water transportation. So we have mapped out 26 routes. Um, it's, it's interesting because Lagos State, I mean, 17% of Lagos State is water, uh, is covered by water. And it's just amazing that we don't e even uh, optimize the use of uh, our water space. So we have carved out 26 routes. And um, the government has gone ahead to set up um, um, an agency called Lag Ferry. We have Lashua, who is a regulatory agency. And then we have Lag Ferry that is operating. So this is the private arm of the ferry service that Lagos State has invested in. Uh, we have invested in a lot of boats. Uh, uh, they had 12, we've invested in another seven. And then we're encouraging local operators to also uh, take up the space and then, um, you know, like improve the movement of passengers across water. So when we first uh, uh, started the uh, upgrading of our water transport route, uh, we used to cater for about 30,000 passengers per day. That has ramped up to about 80,000, and uh, the target is about 350,000 trips, and they will continue to increase that as more investors come in and invest in water transportation. Um, additionally, the government is, um, has embarked on the rehabilitation of seven jetties, so uh, we have rehabilitated Bayeku in Ikurudu. We're doing Badagri. Uh, there's another uh, jet in Ikurudu called Ofi Ikurudu. So we're beginning to look at the areas where people go into and then develop, develop uh, the terminals 
and then ensure that those terminals are connected with a bus station so that when you get off the terminal, there's a bus that will take you to your final destination. So we're not building them in isolation. And that's very important. That makes water transport even more attractive. So these are some of the projects that we've embarked on. We're, lo we're looking, I mean, we're encouraging the private sector to come and invest also in water transportation. And um, uh, the government is willing to franchise the various routes that are available. So the integration concept that we have, this is the, the integration concept for Marina. You can see the blue line and the red line. And then below you can see the uh, BLT underneath. So the, the bus will be, I mean, the rail will be elevated coming into Marina. And then you then go down, you can get, uh, you can get on top of your BLT or uh, at the back, uh, you can board uh, your ferry. And, and that takes you to your various uh, most uh, various destination. So the concept here is integration. It has to be integrated. People must be able to move seamlessly from one mode to the other, and it has to be attractive enough to draw the uh, middle class as well as the elite to use public transport um, in Lagos. Uh, when you go to Bogota, you see rich people using public transport. And that's because it's very convenient, it's very safe, and it's faster to actually use it to get to your destination. And there's no reason why we can't do the same for Lagos State. So having talked about the public transport, I now want to focus on what we're doing on the road network to ensure that um, we, to ensure that we maximize the existing road network. So what we did was to look at all the bottlenecks in Lagos. So we were able to identify 60 of those bottlenecks. And um, the idea here is to ensure that where you have bottlenecks, we unplug it, we increase the capacity, and then we ensure that we give parity to public transportation. So in most cases, when we built our roundabouts, the population of Lagos was between 3 million and 5 million. And when you go to those roundabouts now, those roundabouts are saturated because we have about 22 million and we're increasing. And the number of cars in Lagos is also increasing. And those roundabouts have themselves become a bottleneck, which is why we're taking them out. So when you look at what we have done in, um, this is uh, Allen Avenue. Uh, ignore the caption here. This is Allen Avenue. This is what Allen Avenue used to look like uh, on the left. So we are taking out the roundabout, and this is what Allen Avenue looks like on the right. So we've signalized the junction, and what we're now doing is synchronizing this with other junctions that we'll be improving. So we're going to be improving the EKJ on the, on the bridge. We're taking out that roundabout. We're signalizing that also. We're going to, uh, if, you, if, if you know the airport roundabout, we're taking that out. We're synchronizing the whole thing. So you can move seamlessly uh, across the various roundabouts. Uh, each of these roundabouts are bottlenecks in themselves, and what we're doing is simply unclogging them. If you're familiar with Lecky uh, roundabout one, so that's what uh, on the left is what it used to look like, on the right is what it now looks like. So we've taken out that roundabout, you can see that we've increased the capacity there, and then we can move seamlessly from one point to the other. Uh, in particular, um, the public transport, especially the high capacity buses that go to Acha can now move seamlessly without getting clogged up at these roundabouts. Likewise, the second roundabout, we have taken out the very ugly oblong roundabout in Lekki second, uh, that's uh, Lekki roundabout two. And what we have done is to signalize, also increase the capacity uh, just to ensure that we give priority uh, to public transport and to make it easier uh, to actually, I mean, you know, to, to resolve conflict. This particular roundabout is notorious for uh, what happens just a few days before Christmas. Every four days before Christmas, it gets gridlocked. Nobody moves there. So the traffic can start from eight o'clock in the, in, the, in the night and 4 a.m. in the morning, you're still trying to navigate yourself ramming, uh, through this roundabout. This is what happened uh, uh, last year. In fact, um, that was when I just became commissioner. So a lot of people were calling for my head. This guy should be sacked. 
This guy came from London. He doesn't know. He doesn't understand what we're going through here. And so we made a decision to take out this roundabout and then see how we can increase uh, the capacity. And then just and this year, um, we did not have that uh, gridlock that we're talking about. So it shows that apart from the answers protest, which complicated, uh, complicated things a little bit, uh, it shows that we're doing something right here. Now, this is the notorious uh, Ecotun roundabout. This is the den of all iniquities. Um, this is the place where the downfalls, you can see on your right, you can see uh, downfalls, people standing on the road, all sorts happening here. And so what we did was to go in there, we took out the roundabout, and uh, we then, uh, you know, we looked at a, a, a decent design that would ensure that we can move traffic through there without getting clogged up. Yes, on the right, there's still a few uh, downfalls, but we'll get rid of those downfalls. But you can see that the special layout uh, of a uh, cartoon roundabout is better than what it used to be before. And travel time there has drastically improved too. This is a um, Maryland. And for those of you who know Maryland also, we had about four statues, which made the radius of uh, turning, especially from Idiroko to Mobology Bank Anthony, pretty difficult. Uh, what we have done is to remove the roundabout. We've signalized that junction. Uh, you can see the lane marking also there. And then further down, going towards Ojota, we've, uh, we've increased the capacity. So in a situation where uh, traffic backs up from Ojota all the way to this junction. We no longer have that because we've just opened up the capacity and uh, we're trying to maximize the capacity um, in Maryland. This is uh, Abraham Adesoya for those of you who are thinking of investing in Abraham Adesoya. So this is a massive roundabout that is very, uh, it costs a lot of uh, hold up. It's not optimal at all. Um, the roundabout is just too large. And what we've simply done is to take out that roundabout. And what you have on the right is, um, uh, is what we're doing. It, it's not complete yet. Um, we are hoping to commission this project by the uh, middle of February, which is uh, a couple of weeks, uh, not three weeks from now. So these are the kind of things that we're doing to optimize uh, the network and to optimize it in such a way that we give priority to public transport. So when I started the presentation, I started with uh, a, a split of what currently exists in Lagos. So we have a situation where 69% of trips are catered for by downfall, 21% uh, is uh, car trips, and then the rest are split between uh, Okada's BLT rail, which is the NLC rail. And what we're moving towards is a situation where 21% of our trips, remember that our trips will have doubled by 2040 because of the number of people that are, we're adding into Lagos State. So we'll, we are hoping to cater for 21% of rail trips. We are hoping to reduce car trips to 17%, increase BLT trips to 16%, and then the regulated buses, which is the bus reform that I've been talking about, will still take the lion's share, but you can see that they will cater for 41%. So, I mean, in London, where I mean, where you guys are, you will see that uh, the, bus, the bus network also caters for a lot of uh, your public transport trips, apart, uh, apart from the uh, rail underground. We don't have underground here, so most of those functions will be carried out by um, uh, bus mode. So, by the time we implement all this, so we'll be able to increase and uh, uh, ramp up uh, the average speed on our road to 40 kilometers per hour and above. That makes Lagos more competitive. It makes it attractive for people to want to come and do business in Lagos. It makes it attractive for investors to want to come and invest in Lagos. And that's what we're hoping to do. So just in conclusion, so we are hoping to increase the network speed, especially during the peak hour from 18 kilometers per hour to over 40 kilometers per hour. We are we are doing our best to ensure that every community has a transport, a public transport station within 500 meters of where they live so that we can improve access to every community. We're trying to make it easier to access your job and to services like hospitals, the banks, et cetera. 
And with what we have put in plan, I mean, in place, 80% of all public transport trips, which are about 25 kilometers or, or, or below, will be done, will be completed within an hour in comparison to over 80% of our trips being completed in two hours. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're doing in Lagos. And uh, I'm inviting you to come and participate and join us in developing a greater Lagos. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. Engineer, Dr. Freddy. Well done, well done. This is, this is amazing stuff. Um, uh, you, you kept me on the edge of my seat to, to show me some part of Lagos uh, I knew as a child and see what amazing work yourself and the state government are really, really doing to revamp Lagos state transport system and to move you away from just being road-based to many other you know, multimodal form of transportation system. I think it's impressive. We're gonna dive in to, to question and answer before I, I'll, gi I'll give you a round of, 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 the, of the presentation as to, uh, you know, you know a, a, a summary at the end. So please, uh, doctor, please take a glass of water because <laughs> we've got some very interesting challenging questions here. And I know you'll be able to answer it. So just zip a glass of water before I start calling people to, uh, to, uh, to come yeah. in and, and ask a question. We're gonna very go in uh, very interesting way. Some people already raised up their hands and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna address those people, also address people who, who uh, take the advantage of uh, putting their, their, their question in the chat room. So the first one I'm gonna call was uh, one of our very prominent uh, uh, female engineer, engineer Rose McCarty. Please, uh, yeah. can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, good evening, doctor, and good evening, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I don't know whether the presenter will be able to answer all the questions today because it's so amazing. And I want to thank Dr. Sunday Kupola for reminding me to join this very important presentation. Thank you very much. However, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Hear However, you. Yeah. Um, because Lagos is becoming a very comfortable and conducive environment to live in, people like Dr. Popola should remain in London and they should not cause more congestion for us in Lagos. Just in a lifetime mood. I, I second that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, sir, please, um, have you taken note of uh, Abraham Adosonia uh, uh, yeah, and then um, the Aja uh, overhead bridge um, where we have the, uh, the two bridges, one up, one down? Um, in the morning, coming from Abraham Adosonia to Aja downwards to uh, Lekki. Uh, it's always uh, a bit difficult now. Yes, the runabout in Abraham Adesanya has been removed. And then we already have a bridge uh, connecting um, the Aja axis down to um, other axis. However, uh, there, there are no traffic lights to control the traffic. We're still experiencing a lot of traffic, especially in the morning. So is there any way, especially that Aja uh, overhead bridge, where uh, people coming down from up and down, and then they will now uh, link up down, and then a lot of congestion, where the service lane is being occupied by downfall. There is no traffic control at all. You just have to struggle your way out, and you keep to, I mean, you tend to stay longer in that area. That's uh, number one. Then Abraham Desenia, Yes, the uh, runabout has been removed, but there is no traffic control there as well. You know, you just, a lot of accidents in that area. Uh, this was who will come that way, the other way. So well, there is no patience to wait for the next person, but if there are, or there is traffic light there, the traffic will control the traffic there. Uh, further right. to that, those areas Thank that you. we do not have 
the traffic lights. Uh, is there any way you can provide way of controlling the traffic with the downfall using the service right. line? Right. Stopping thank, the, um, thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Engineer Rose. Yes. Engineer Rose, thank you very much. We, I think they've got the gist of that. Uh, doctor, do you want me to yeah. ask a couple of people to ask a question or do you want to go one at a time? Let me do this one and then we'll take a couple of questions because okay. this is a very okay. important question. Yeah. So AJA is a special, is a special I mean, when, when I was uh, doing my presentation, I said AJA is a special area. So I've had a lot of cons I mean, uh, consultation with the neighborhood of AJA. One thing she hasn't men uh, mentioned also is that there's a place where these tippers go and then they go and collect sand and then they come out and then scatter the whole place. So what we're doing in AJA is that once we build the Aja bus terminal. Uh, we're linking the, the two bus terminals that we're, we're, we're developing there. We're linking them with an overhead bridge. Those downfalls we have created temporarily somewhere where they should now move into. And then the traffic light uh, in Abraham Adesoya is what needs to be completed before we commission in February. And that's what I talked about. So they've taken out the roundabout. They've now completed the design. The traffic lights are not going in. And then the traffic light just uh, in Aja, I think it was destroyed when we had the NSAS project. Um, I have contractors who are bringing in the, I mean, the poles. I think they should have started by now and they would erect the traffic light there. But most importantly, those downfalls are going to be taken out of there. They cannot park on the road because they are the ones that are causing problems. So people coming from the Jubilee Bridge that you're talking about, just, you know, descend and then just walk into all these downfalls. You know, there are four lanes. Downfalls take three lanes to pick up passengers and then they only leave one lane for, for cars to pass through. So we're taking that, those out, those traffic lights will come in. So I'm very much aware of what is happening in Niger. I'm in, I mean, I'm, I'm in touch with the community leader there. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, especially when we um, commission Abraham this one year, you will see a difference there. So the traffic lights are impatient now because we are bringing everything in. Remember that we destroyed it ourselves. So we are now rebuilding the whole thing again. Okay, so the traffic lights will come, other will come to that place, um, and uh, uh, you you begin to see some bit of sanity in our job. Right. Thank you, thank you very much for addressing that very nicely. Let me just tell you a little bit about Engineer Rose. Engineer Rose is a new uh, elected member of uh, Nigerian Society of Engineers into the executive. And uh, she works in the area of uh, standards and uh, codes for, for, for Nigeria, Nigeria uh, standard and codes. She's one of the uh, uh, managers or chairman or CEO in the, in the organization. So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I'm gonna go through, I know a thank couple you. of you have raised up your hand, but before you raise up your hand, some other people already put their question in the chat. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through very quickly uh, and address three relevant questions. So if I call your name, please unmute and ask your question so that the, uh, the speaker can ask the, uh, the uh, answer the question together. They are very related. So the first one is uh, initiate DO. I don't know what DO stand for. If you're there, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, I wanted to find out if, um, I, first of all, let me be the uh, commissioner for transport for an excellent presentation. I'm actually very hopeful. I wanted to uh, recommend that rather than just uh, uh, integrate and add to public transport, we need to look at a way of creating uh, more business and industrial hubs all over Lagos so that people don't need to travel in huge hordes every morning. Uh, I think we need to look at that and then build upwards. Uh, we still build very flat. We need to build more high rises. Of course, that comes with issues of power. And I, I, I do actually think that a lot of our journeys could be avoided if we focused on developing industrial and business hubs in localities all over Lagos, uh, so we need to sort of head over the, the bridge in huge buses or cars, uh, uh, you know, every morning. And I, I think if we were to address that as part of the larger picture, we might get somewhere. Thank you. Right. What, what's your full name? What's your full, full name, please? Dio. I am David Okoro. Did you? David Okoro. David you Okoro. Did you, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, the next one is Irene. And Irene uh, Olumide Olayinka, the question is very similar. So, Irene, Irene, I'll let you go first. Um, thank you, um, Dr. Popola. 
Um, Dr. Fry, good afternoon. This is Irene. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my question is simple. I'm just wondering what strategies are in place to ensure um, continuity in these uh, plans. Because as we know, um, new governments start to um, come with their own plans, thereby neglecting the previous plans. Thank you. In this series of questions, uh, can Olumide or Lainika also uh, ask a question, please? Thank you very much for the enlightening session, sir. Um, in um, relation to Irene's uh, question, I was just wondering what uh, sustainability measures are there to ensure that there is a continuum in the space the level of the proposed um, development of yes uh, or no? infrastructure that uh, is in place. Because whilst considering um, the continuation of the proposed uh, uh, infrastructural um, developments, then junction and realignment, resignalization, and all of that, what are some of the other NMUs, I mean non-motorized user uh, improvements that would fit into the um, overall master plan. You want to talk about bikeability, you want to talk about pedestrianism, you want to talk about other sustainable modes of transport that will want to enhance some sort, some sort of modal split so that it's like we are not concentrating, over concentrating on the PT side of things whilst you know maybe giving little focus on right. the, thank on you the thank you thank you very much for that doctor uh, yeah let me did you, did you capture those three questions or you want me to yes, remind yeah, you no, yes i did i did i did okay, so I'll, 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 I'll answer them now so mm -hmm. let me go to mr david okorododu so um there are a lot of things that have gone into this plan uh, we've worked with the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development responsible for developing model city plans. So in their plan, they have identified 28 regional uh, business hub and industrial centers. And when you look at uh, the way we have um, developed the rail line, uh, where we put the lines, it is connecting those hubs so that you don't have to go to the island uh, for a great job. You can get great jobs in Oshudi. You can get great jobs in Alimosho, etc. So it is trying to open up the, the, the whole of Lagos so that investors can come and uh, co-locate and uh, locate in Lagos. I mean, in Ikeja, um, Oshudi, etc. rather than VI where everybody goes to. So the essence of the rail line, the, the network of rail, the network of BRT is to ensure that Business uh, people I and mean, businesses are encouraged to move out of the island into these different areas, and so that we can spread out the uh, the opportunities that are in Lagos. So that's the that's so one thing I did say in this presentation is that there was a model city plan, which is the regional plan, which has identified 28 hubs, and uh, which we have connected with our rail lines with a BLT, etc. Now, going to Irene's question, what strategy are we putting in place uh, to ensure continuity? That's why we have developed a 20-year plan. Mm -hmm. This is a plan that has gone to the House of Assembly. This is a plan that will be ratified into the law. So any government that comes in knows that it has a pool of projects that it wants to embark on. Um, gone are the days. So gone are the days where politicians come in and say, you know what, I want to build a road at the back of my village uh, or at the back of my house. What you see is politicians coming in. Okay, what's the plan on the ground? Okay, um, this is what has been done. Um, and you have a pool of experts. That's why people like myself have come home to um, advise government and to help government. And that's why people like you should come home also. So as we develop, you encourage, okay, this is the next place where we need to develop so that we can enhance the previous uh, investment that we have done. So we're building a network of, um, uh, you know, like uh, infrastructure. So we have a master plan in place that every government has to reference when they come in. And so that would ensure that there's continuity from one government to the other. 
this plan, I mean, I joined, I came into Lagos um, in 2008, and it is this same plan that we're all de uh, developing from. So that plan has not changed. So there's that continuity there. Now, one thing I said, and I just mentioned, because non-motorized transport is a different, is a different presentation on its own. So in my time in Lamata, we ensured that we ratified the uh, non-motorized transport policy into law. So you cannot build a road in Lagos today without uh, including walkway. And then we have a network of cycle lanes that we have mapped out and we have investors already investing. So for example, there's a bike lane in Wemco. We are building a bike lane um, in uh, Freedom. And when you go to uh, Lekki, so uh, Freedom Way, and we're connecting it to um, Ikuyi, et cetera. And then when you come to Lagos, if you're familiar with Lagos, in fact, we, all, we, we, we have clubs, or, I mean, cycle clubs that go cycling in the morning and they themselves are also investing in infrastructure. So there's a, net, there's a, a master plan for non-motorized transport, which we have integrated with this master plan. So it's not a matter of just developing this hard infrastructure. We are developing the soft infrastructure, cycling, walking because we want to bring walking back into the when i was a young boy before i went to england i used to walk to school the the, the, the walkways used to be massive but i mean now they just simply disappeared because downfalls have taken over them so we're get, um, we're, we're we're getting them back we're developing safer uh, pedestrian walkways and safer um, cycle lanes so that people can cycle people can walk their options for people and the key word is providing options for our people to travel from one point to the other. If you want to cycle, why not? Thank you. Right. Thank you very much for that. Our next uh, series of questions, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Mr. Akin, Akinol, Akinola, I think. I think that's the name. To ask Akinola. his question. Mm -hmm. Akinola, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much as well, uh, the Honorable Commissioner, uh, for making time out. Uh, I recognize uh, you might have had a million things doing this, and thank you to the uh, EXCO for putting this uh, initiative together. Uh, my question is very simple and straightforward. It relates to the water transport uh, side of your presentation. My okay, can you repeat that again? Can you repeat that again? It relates to what? The water transportation side of your oh, okay. presentation. Okay, I got it. And um, it's simply to ask if there's a particular reason the government prefers to invest in fixed concrete jetties and how are those sort of expected to fare in uh, tidal activity? So, you know, when the flood goes up and down. Um, and, and that's just to say, why not consider uh, floating pontoon jetties and the like? Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much uh, for that, Akin. Uh, the next one, Ayroba Akomonam. Sorry, Ayroba. Let me just stop there rather than having to misspell and mispronounce your surname. Ayroba, engineer Ayroba. Apologize for background noise, background noise where I am. Uh, my question is Is Lagos still looking at some military formations? Uh, that have caught up a whole lot of landmass, and you have communities behind these landmasses, and uh, they have to go through a longer route to get to where they are. For example, Ekweda Demo area, we have about four, four uh, we have a force base, Ikeja, we have Shasha, we have the international uh, military international airport, we have another air force base in first, uh, very close to first half books where you can get to Ijegu and all. So, is it possible for them to interface with the government and probably create a corridor, a real corridor, maybe BRT or something, so that uh, there should be some pathway through this uh, uh, real estate that the government has allocated themselves, the federal government, and is grossly underutilized. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arabo. And the last one in this series of three questions is from uh, Niyi Akin Bogun. Can you please unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, hello, Dr. Fred. Um, yeah, I'm Nia Kimbogo. I work within the railway industry in the UK. So my question is related to the trains, uh, to the rail, rail side of your presentation. 
Um, obviously impressive what the plan is. However, we do need people to be able to afford the, afford the service. Um, I was speaking with a friend last week, uh, commuting from Abelkuta to Lagos, and the train was virtually empty, practically empty, because people cannot afford it. So mine is around affordability. Um, what is going to be in place to make sure that obviously is affordable, which makes it accessible to people, and also incentives for children of school age on the, on, up to the age of 16. However, let me just say, you're doing a sterling job with your team. Well done. Thank you very much, Nui. Where, where, where are you based in the UK? Um, I live in Kent. Right, okay. Transport for London. Thank you very much. Before the end of this conversation, I want you to register with us. We need people like you. Yeah, we've got, a link. we've got a link on our chat. Please go on that link and register. And many more people, if you're in the southeast of uh, London or anything below Birmingham, please come and join us. This is very interesting. And please send me your phone number as well. I've got a, I've got a job for you. Thank you very much, Nii. So please, uh, doctor, can you please answer those three questions before we move on? Sure, thank, uh, thank you very much. So let me go to the first question with you, John, uh, water transportation. So the, the, uh, I mean, you're asking for why we're not looking at uh, floating pontoon jetties. We're looking at the whole rest of them. So we'll build concrete jetty where we feel that it's, it's safe to build concrete jetties and then we'll, we'll do pontoon jetties. So when you go to Ilaje, you will see that we built a, a, a pontoon there, and that, that just increased the number of stabling places that uh, the boats can actually disembark and then drop people. So it's a combination of those. So we're not just rigid on the concrete. So we'll do our investigation, and then we'll then um, look at what is appropriate uh, for uh, that particular area. And we all, I mean, be, be, uh, we're not just looking at that. We have also set up an, uh, an institution that is setting up what you call a safety control center so that we can monitor the waters, we can monitor the tides, and then we are also carrying out various kinds of uh, um, hydrographic surveys uh, so that we can ha have a database or, or a time series of how the water moves, et cetera. So it's not just about building jetties, it's about understanding our waterways and then understanding what is, uh, what is appropriate for the different areas. So it's horses for courses. Okay, so to the second question. Um, hmm, that's a bit of a tricky question. So you're asking us to go on, uh, uh, to go to war with the federal government, especially the military base, et cetera. So I think where, uh, when you go to any, anywhere in the country, there are areas that are designated as security or, I mean, there are areas that you cannot go into. And unfortunately, we have such in Lagos. So areas where we can, where, where we can uh, negotiate, we will, but most of these areas you're talking about are security areas. And so we just have to simply find a way around them rather than build through them. Um, but in situations where uh, the federal government is willing to back down and let us construct through um, some of the yards, we will be able to do that. But uh, I think we'll just maintain our lane, uh, if I can just put it that way. And then just find a, a much more sustainable way of developing our infrastructure and then moving people from one point to the other. And um, Mr. Ni, I think we will actually know him. Eh? That's why I was smiling a bit. It's pretending like he doesn't know me. Um, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why we are uh, adopting the common ticketing system is to reduce the cost of uh, transportation. So um, we are in a situation where people pay for the various modes that they embark on. So, for example, if I use downpour and I want to change to water transport, so I pay for downpour. I pay the downpour driver. I pay the water transport operator. If I now want to move on to rail, I pay the rail operator. So with this common ticketing system, what we are charging is distance is based on the distance rather than the number of modes that you take. So it will be distance based and we're doing everything possible to ensure that the average uh, percentage of 
people's income that they spend on transportation is reduced from 40% to 20%. We're conscious of what is happening. And with this integration in place, I think it will be affordable. The example you, you gave is a situation where that mode is not integrated and it's, a, it's an interstate uh, mode. But with what we're developing, it will be integrated. It will, the charges will be based on distance, uh, your origin and destination, and rather than the mode in which you're traveling. But having said that, we just have to be reasonable in what we charge. Transportation is not cheap. Transportation in UK, in fact, uh, rail transport, uh, I, I know that a lot of people complain when you hike your price every year. So we will charge uh, what is reasonable, but we cannot charge something that is less than what is viable. And that's important. And then when we get the network in place, there'll be a lot of incentives that will come and that, 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 that we will look at. So the elderly people, children, et cetera, uh, the operator will come in and then we'll sit down and then we can look at a number of incentives that we would uh, put in place just to ensure that we make public transport attractive. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Now that uh, majority of our brother and sister in America can now breed, now that uh, Trump is no more the, uh, their president, let's go to California to, to, to try and unmute uh, our brother in California, Ed Ife. Can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Oh, thank you, everyone. And thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner for making time to present today. I have a series of questions actually, but I will start off with uh, slide 11. I think uh, I kind of missed a bit of that. You did say if, uh, I'm just paraphrasing now, we can't build ourselves out of conjecture. What do you mean by that? Okay, can I answer that now? Yes, please. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that as we build more road, people buy more cars. Um, Lagos is a place that where people come into. So as we build more infrastructure, people just fill them, uh, fill them up. And so you, you get into a situation where you're not even feeling the benefit. And so because of the sheer number of people that you, I mean, that, that we have to cater for, you have to look for a sustainable way of developing your infrastructure so that people can feel the impact as quickly as possible. Okay. All right. Um, Th thank you very much. Do you have another question? Actually, I sent them to you. Uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've got them. I'm just giving you the opportunity to ask one or two of them. Okay. You, if, I, if I leave you alone, you will ask questions to the end of, of, of the <laughs> I mean, you can you, you can you can you can always you can always leave my number with people so that they can ask question and I can get. Yes, I will appreciate it because answer. because That's I right. did send I did send about. Uh, I've, uh, I've seen them all. Four or I've five all. questions. Yes, don't okay. don't worry, Frederick. We'll, we'll pass all this to you. The one you can't answer, and I will pass. I just want to give other people the opportunity. To okay. Be able to, uh, all right. No problem. Sure. 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 No problem. Thank you very much, Ed, and uh, uh, we'll kind of come come and see Uncle Biden very soon. Uh, for the first time, actually not the first time, a couple of times, we've had husband and wife on our webinar. And today we have husband and wife again. And I'm yeah. going to call the two of them to, to, uh, to, to ask a question now. Our brothers, Engineer Solomon and Engineer Precious. Please, Engineer Solomon first. Oh, no, 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 ladies first. Engineer Precious first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dr. Precious, sorry. Yeah, oh, hello, Sunday, Dr. Sunday. I was going to correct you, it's Dr. Um, Precious. Um, thank you for having us. And um, thank you, Honorable Commissioner, for your, um, your time today. And I thought the presentation was very well informed and it's just incredible how much work you've actually been able to accomplish for, for Lagos in your tenure um, there. Um, okay, so, I had one question around bus reforms. Um, the fact that, you know, damn for bus buses are loitering and um, causing more, more havoc. And, and the idea that we can improve all of that and, uh, you know, the, the, the issues with congestion by regulating that, that is such a good idea. However, I was wondering what structure we have in place 
just to ensure that we don't increase the divide between the poor and the rich because the operation of that dam, those dam for buses are for some people, their livelihood. So how are we sort of ensuring that while trying to, you know, gain the bigger picture and take the benef benefit from the uh, regulation of such a system that we're not taking people's livelihood and, and, you know, in essence, making the rich richer and the poor poorer because they no longer can make whatever they've been making from the operation of those damn for bosses. That's, that's basically my question. So. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Precious. Kem. Listen, before you, before you stop, you have to tell us about your PhD, what you did, and whether you've actually implemented some of that work. Because our speaker will be very, very interested in the, in the, in the outcome of your PhD uh, dissertation. Can you just give one minute, just to give us a brief description of your, what your PhD was about, about? Oh, indeed. Sunday, thank you very much for that opportunity. So. Um, I actually did my PhD at Imperial College, and it was going to, going to be one of my questions. But you know, I, I appreciate that um, um, with the, with presentations like this, you can't present everything. Um, and one of my questions to you, sir, would have been, you know, what the plans are for freight. Um, and and in your presentation today, I noticed that you didn't touch on that, which is why I haven't. I thought I wouldn't ask that question. But my thesis was on dry port solution, and and how that might benefit issues with congestion around Lagos as a port city. So the idea that we can re or divert, re, divert um, containers from roads onto rail to some, 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 um, uh, you know, some port as in dry port in the hinterland. So this is beyond Lagos, for example. And so by doing that, freeing up um, capacity on the roads, um, for, for vehicles, for, for, for buses, um, private transport, public transport to use. And, and, and that was what I looked at um, in, my, in my thesis and just looked at what such a facility would look like. What would, it be, what, what, what would be required for you to, to get the greatest benefit from introducing such a solution for a city like Lagos? I know, you know, there's so many potential solutions to, um, you know, to traffic congestion. And I, I guess what I did as in my thesis was look at dry pots as one of those solutions. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Precious uh, Kem. Can we pass the mic into the other room to our brother Solomon, I worry about, please. <laughs> no, thank you very much, um, Dr. Sunday. Um, my, my question to the Honourable Commissioner, um, I think it's twofold. Um, the first one touches on the, the master plan and um, <clears throat> it centers around you know, the, the fact that um, I don't know how, how waterproof it is to ensure that it remains valid um, for Lagos in 2100. So when you look at London, for instance, you know, you, when you think about the underground and, you know, the fact that most of the underground stations were actually built over a hundred years ago. Now the question is, what is this current master plan that would cater for the, 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 the you know, the, the massive growth of innovation um, for the next 100 years? I know you did touch on um, the presentation, the, I think it was the PwC presentation where they said that the population could grow to about 89 million or thereabout. So I think I would like to know what the plan is. And then the second question is regarding project financing of all of this rail and, um, and BRT projects. Now, we do understand the impact, of, you know, the FX exposure of most of these long-term projects. Mm -hmm. and definitely the, the, the cost of the project will be passed on to the common man because they are PPP projects, right? So I, I, I think I would like to hear from you on the plans are to make all of this sustainable. Right, I'll thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, Solomon. And I think one of the other questions you asked, which is very, very uh, panic, um, particular at this point, you highlighted uh, the use of uh, prefabricated fossil fuel vehicles. I mean, most of the presentation Absolutely. today has not touched about alternative 
energy or em fair environmentally friendly vehicles. So I will I would like Absolutely. to add that to your question as well. Thank you. Yeah. So if I could just elaborate on that question. So so mm -hmm. I mean one of the, the major um successes of the telecoms industry in Nigeria is that you know we boast of our ability to have been able to leapfrog technology and not have to start from the scratch and um, being able to meet up with you know the Western world. Now I'm wondering that the the master plan that you have presented has not really demonstrated opportunities for us to leapfrog infrastructural um, developments to ensure that these this master plan is you know is EV ready, i.e. Um, electric vehicle ready in future. And most importantly, it just seems like, you know, the master plan is attracting a lot of use of fossil fueled um, vehicles, which obviously would have massive adverse environmental impact on Lagosians and even the aquatic life um, when you look at the water structure. So the question is, what are we doing now to avoid a lot of deaths or a lot of illnesses, terminal illnesses in future to Lagosians due to this um, vehicles and transportation problems that we could um, foresee in future? Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Um, uh, let, me, let me take these questions before I lose uh, uh, my thoughts on them. So I'll, I'll start with the last and then I'll then proceed to the first. So when you put a master plan together, then there's a lot of documents that go behind it and it's not everything that you can present. So in presenting or in developing this master plan, one of the key objectives was to reduce the carbon emission uh, greenhouse gas in Lagos. And as part of the strategy to reduce greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas, what we're doing is that we're our uh, uh, real our rail uh, infrastructure are electric, okay? So we're moving away from diesel. Uh, we have made it clear that we want electric trains. The BLT that we are developing, uh, we have been doing a lot of research on what we call uh, CNG gas, compressed natural gas. Uh, so most of this will be moving to compressed and then to electric. In fact, um, uh, before the corona started, I was in China where we were looking at the electric buses. And um, as I speak, in the next one month, uh, we have launched our first electric car. Uh, we have put a point uh, in Marina, and then there's going to be electric points in Alausa. So we are encouraging investors. In fact, we have an investor, an Indian investor, that has set up a plant in Amu World of Faith. Uh, going uh, on your way to Badagri, uh, that will be providing and uh, producing electric cars. So most of our, our buses will move to CNG and then eventually to electric. So there are plans to do that. And then uh, for the rail, we're developing plants to ensure that we're able to generate our electricity. So um, you can't present all that here, but all this have gone into planning uh, the master plan, I mean, to, in developing the master plan because uh, we in Lagos and Nigeria, just like any other country, have to find a way to uh, cut carbon emissions. And so that has been uh, at the forefront in developing this uh, uh, master plan. So I'm hoping that that answers your question. So it's not all about, in fact, it's not all about uh, fuel or diesel, et cetera. We're moving towards uh, developing electrics. Uh, but before we actually get to the electric cars, uh, as, we, as we speak, we're uh, we're working with Owando on developing, uh, using gas to power uh, uh, the buses, uh, et cetera. So that's what's going on uh, in the transport sector. The transport sector is the second biggest emitter of uh, carbon. Uh, and so we are very much aware that we need to reduce the carbon emissions coming out of the transport sector. And that has been factored into this uh, uh, master plan. In terms of, uh, project finances. So in, in, in financing some of our, uh, our rail, and that's why we're encouraging uh, a, a combination of local and foreign investors. So the CBN recently has come up with a scheme 
where um, most of the rail lines will be financed uh, in Naira rather than in dollars. And uh, so it's, it's in a way to uh, reduce the foreign uh, exposure. Um, I don't understand the nitty gritty because I'm not a finance person, but I know that the, there is a package and uh, there's a way in which you hedge your investment just to ensure that we reduce your foreign risk. So um, in terms of how we're financing the blue and the red line, I think I would encourage you to write to us for that and then we'll then uh, get our finance people to give you a detailed description of how they're financing that without, I mean, uh, uh, with uh, the aim of reducing, uh, reducing this foreign risk. So we're pretty much aware of that. Um, and that's why I said there are creative ways in which we can develop and uh, fund the master plan. A lot of things have gone into trying to finish this blue line. And uh, uh, whether you like it or not, with the uh, CBN government, the fund, I mean, the, the, the fund that we're using to complete the red line and the blue line is in single digits. And everything has been converted into Naira. And then where we have foreign uh, exposure, um, there is uh, some insurance that we've taken just to hedge that uh, risk. So, uh, but I'm not a finance person, uh, but I know that a lot has gone into that. Um, there was a question on uh, how water, oh, how waterproof is the, is, is our, our master plan. So what makes a good master plan? You don't just develop a master plan over, to, I mean, for 20 years and then just keep it, in, I mean, keep it on the shelf for 20 years. Every five years, you revisit that master plan because technology is changing. Uh, there are new modes coming on board and you have to revisit and then keep updating it. Yes, you have a master plan for 20 years, but every five years you go in there, you, 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 you evaluate and then you update it uh, just to make sure that you're catching up with reality and making sure that what is in your master plan is not out of date. So every five years, and in fact, we are about to embark on another one where the French Development Agency is funding uh, the update of this master plan. So we would update the master plan. There's a lot of technology that is coming in place that we want to incorporate just to make mobility much more easier. So um, it's not a matter of just developing a plan for 20 years, and then we've ratified that plan into law. So there's a, a plan that has been ratified into law, and then there's a plan where an agency is responsible for updating it every five years so that we incorporate uh, up-to-date technology, et cetera. Uh, now for pressures, I'm gonna take the two questions. I'm also gonna take your freight question because that's an, a very interesting question. I deliberately left uh, freight out of the dollars will be here till tomorrow. So in terms of the bus reform, uh, what structure do we have in place to make sure that uh, we do not uh, widen the gap between the rich and the poor? I'm not sure, I, 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 I don't understand. I, I, <laughs> where you feel that uh, is the poor that uh, you're down for. In fact, the poor walk uh, is the middle class uh, or maybe just slightly below middle class that you're down for. But this is what we're doing. So all the people that have invested in downfalls, all, the, all these people that have literally two you yeah, know, yeah, businesses yeah. in there, we've asked them to form a cooperative. So we have developed a situation where all those who are already in the industry will not be worse off by the time we reform. So all these people, just like what they did in Bogota, are forming cooperatives. And so when you form a cooperative and then a route is franchised to you, so uh, you have a situation where your drivers are insured, your drivers have health insurance, your drivers have a salary, your drivers are trained, your drivers have a schedule so you don't have to drive 16 hours. So all these are what we're putting in place to make their life even better. So we're trying to upscale and to, 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 to narrow that gap between the poor and the rich. And that's the essence of the reform. Now, with regard to your freight, uh, let, me just talk, let me just say a little bit about what we're doing on freight uh, so that you can appreciate and then you can see where your PhD flows in. So we have been having um, some considerable stakeholder engagement with MPA uh, with Shippers Council, with all the various stakeholders that are involved in the running of the port and uh, in managing freight around the Apapa area. And we have an investor 
who have come in and have developed a call-off system. And what we're doing right now is investing in truck parks. One of the biggest problems that we have in uh, Apapa right now is that all these trucks don't have anywhere to park, so they park on the road and they cause congestion. So we're investing in these uh, truck parks. So there's a truck park called Bola Ametinobu Truck Park, which Lagos State has handed over to this investor as its own equity. Uh, equity. There's a lily pond which is being further redeveloped, and then there is a port. Uh, there is a um, there, there is a land in Ugeri that is in Ogun State that has been acquired, and the system will be run in such a way that if you do not have any business in Lagos on a particular day, you cannot come into Lagos. The call of system will not call you into Lagos. However, if you have goods, I mean, if you are scheduled to pick up something that day, then the call of system will marshal you to Bola Metinubu and then uh, further to Lily Pond before you go go up, uh, go on and pick, uh, pick up, uh, pick up your goods. The rail is medium to long term. So we are aware that the federal government is still further developing a narrow gauge that would extend into a papa. So we are waiting for that to happen, and then that would further ease uh, the congestion in a papa. But for now, we are investing in truck parks. We are using a call-off system, so everybody that wants to do business in Lagos must be on that call-off system. Otherwise, you have no business. And then we did uh, a papa where we, we've developed a cordon system where when you enter that system, you, there's a charge. So if you have no business coming into a papa, you know that you're paying, mo uh, paying money doing uh, nothing and then you'll be told away. So that's the short term uh, measure that we put in place. And when you read, uh, I mean, when you look at the read up uh, in the last one month, Lagos State has taken over from the presidential tax force, and Lagos State is now managing the affairs of what happens outside the Papa. So we are developing in truck parks. We have the color system. Uh, we are collaborating with Ogun State just to ensure that we have a uh, bigger land where we marshal the, the vehicles, and then the medium to long term, we're waiting for the federal government to further develop its narrow gauge into the port, and then we begin to move uh, goods uh, from the port uh, using rail. And in, uh, also uh, on the waterways, so we have investors who are, are using barges to actually move goods from Apapa to warehouses in Ikurudu or even to uh, Ogun State, Ibafo, et cetera. So these are the number of investments that are going on in Lagos where we can, uh, in, in an attempt to actually reduce congestion in Apapa. So let me stop there. Right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Frederick. Uh, we've got three more questions. Actually, we have more questions. A lot of questions online yeah. in chat room. I'm not going to post them to you because normally we'll try to finish at four. But well, three more pertinent questions, and they're not really, really engineering, but I think I think you should, you should air them. Whereby the rest of the question I've told people online, please email your question if you have more to our email address, nsclondonuk at gmail.com. Right, here we go. Engineer Philip Adewale, please unmute yourself and ask your question. All right, uh, thank you so much. Thank you to the organizer of this program. Uh, Honorable Commissioner, thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful work uh, you are doing in Lagos State. Uh, in the course of your presentation, sir, that was a really good one. You make emphasis on traffic management and all the things that the Lagos State through uh, your office have been able to achieve within the little time you've been in office, the junction improvements, Allen and all the rest. Uh, may I say that, um, or ask that even when we are developing all this uh, infrastructure to have a seamless traffic flow within this environment, uh, it is also a known fact that the yellow buses, the activities of the unions are actually affecting the flow of traffic in some of these uh, area where infrastructure has been put in place. I'll give you uh, an instance. For example, we have the Osho, the uh, terminal, where we have the wonderful uh, transport network infrastructure that have been put in place 
and we have buses, bus service, and routing different uh, routes through that uh, terminal. But the observation is that we still have yellow buses around uh, that corridor that are actually impeding uh, the, the flow of traffic. Uh, and one of the agenda of the bus reform is that we want to be able to reduce travel time. Uh, what, what is your office or what is the ministry, uh, what are they doing to ensure in the area of enforcement? Because putting uh, infrastructure in place is one thing. Uh, the area of enforcement, because we have seen that, for example, I also give you an example of uh, Ikorodu Corridor, uh, whereby the BRT Corridor is also being overtaken uh, by Okadas and by other uh, motorists, uh, whereby hindering the flow of traffic for public uh, transportation. We have also seen uh, cases whereby all the labor that has been that have been created to also allow um, buses, especially these commercial buses, to pull over and 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 conduct their activities. We still see most of them on the highway. Now, the union, is there any plan? Because we, we still know up to date, the union, they are on the road collecting their dues or whatever uh, way they go, they go about that. And that is a major problem. It's a major problem. They conduct the activities and they affect traffic flow, even when infrastructures has been placed around some of this area that I just mentioned. Is there anything your mm -hmm. ministry, the Ministry of Transport, is there a way you are engaging them to be able you know, to get their due maybe off, off the road? Because it is, it, it is, it is. Thank you, it is, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much thank for you. that. Thank you very much for that. That's very, very important question there. Uh, the next one, Stephen Ogundare, Engineer Stephen Ogundare, please unmute yourself. Right. If it's not there, uh, Engineer Shinedu, please. Hello. Um, it's it's been a wonderful uh, presentation, um, Dr. Fred. Thank you so much, and thank you for all the good work you're doing. Um, I have very simple questions because um, um, most of the questions I had have been answered so elo have been asked and answered so eloquently by uh, yourself. Um, the first one is around flood protection. We know that Lagos is um, is most of Lagos is um, below the sea line. Um, so, what is the strategy to protect all this um, wonderful infrastructure um, in your twenty-year uh, plan? And the second question is about the street hawkers. Um, whilst you know, um, there's all. Um, the wonderful improvements um, that you've planned, uh, we we can't take away, we can't take away the street street hawkers um, and the, the the issues around that, and um, and um, what's what's the what's the plan to take them off the streets and uh, provide um, alternative um, eco sources of income or a, a source of economy for them, and then the last question is your data gathering how. You've, you've, you've shown your presentation has been fantastic, but um, I'm just curious to know how you've been able to um, gather data and the authenticity of your data. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Adu. Uh, because Stephen Ogundara is not here, I'm going to allow Engineer Abdu Ogbadara to ask his question. Please go straight to the question. Thank you. Engineer Abdul, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes. Hello, Doctor. Um, good and presentation. My question is regards to the uh, waterway. Um, are there plans to uh, capture and integrate the banana boat into a centralized system? That is uh, the e payment and uh, geo monitoring. And the second one is um, um, is the government going to um, sub subsidize private investors to participate in the business of boat, uh, boat operations? That 
I hope you caught her because I didn't quite get a question, but I cannot finish. I cannot finish this question in one minute. Um, I, 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 I got the question. I got the question. Without, you got it. Without I got, the, I got the question. That just raised up his hand. He was actually the one that said all of these, uh, this connection with you going. Engineer, or he doesn't like me calling him engineer. Shegu Matis, please unmute yourself. He works for the uh, 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 Ministry of uh, Trans, not Transport, works in Lagos State. Shegu Matis, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Dr. Fred. Um, just um, on adding on on this, to thank the Honorable Commissioner for making this appointment. I only met him once to discuss this three months ago, and true to his words, he answered us. And thank you for the beautiful presentation for what we are doing in Lagos to make Lagos a better place. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's no question. You're just promoting Lagos State on our, on our free ride. OK, well, thank you, Thank you. Anyway, Frank, can you please answer the last two questions? <laughs> OK, uh, sure, sure, sure. So the first question is uh, the activities of the Yellow Dampers now. Um, if you listen to my presentation very carefully, I said the ultimate aim is to get rid of yellow dampers and to reform the bus sector in such a way that we're able to regulate them properly. So everything that I've talked about, uh, what we're putting in place to ensure that we get rid of them and, um, uh, and, and ensure that they're incorporated for uh, we, we, we bring them into this new system so that they can be regulated properly. Now, we need to upgrade our infrastructure in such a way that even the buses, I mean, you're talking about them parking on the road, causing uh, congestion. Part of the reform is to provide stabling yards. Part of the reform is to ensure that they're able to schedule or, you know, like a, follow a rotor rather than bus, uh, buses arriving randomly at uh, the various uh, bus stations. So once that reform is in place, I think we'll be able to take care of most of uh, the issues that you've raised. Now, just to add to also some of the issues you've raised. So in the next one month, because we're using a lot of technology to actually uh, enforce the traffic law, the transportation law in Lagos, so first of all, we've implemented what we call the AMPL, the Automatic Number Plate Recognition, which captures vehicles that are not uh, licensed. And so we're able to get those off the road. Um, next week, Tuesday, uh, with uh, the governor of Lagos State, we are commissioning what we call the handheld set, where LASMA would hold this handheld device and then they'll be able to capture the number plates of people that offend or violate the traffic law. And that is sent to our back end, and then people get a post. Uh, they, get, they get a ticket in their post. And so with that in place, what we want to do is we want to minimize our interactions with people on the road. And then when people begin to see that they're getting a lot of fines, I think they will self-regulate themselves. I believe so. Uh, the reason why people are doing what they're doing right now is because they're not punished and there is no punitive measures. So with all this in place, we will be able to curb the, I mean, the excesses of the yellow driver, I mean, the, the downfall drivers and people that break the, 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 the transport law um, in Lagos. So it's just a matter of ensuring that we have ways in capturing the evidence that they've broken the law, we can go to our mobile court and then we can put punitive measures in place and then ensure that these people are punished. Uh, the second question, what are you doing in the area? Okay, that answers the areas of enforcement. Flood protection, what is the strategy? So um, we have a brilliant uh, um, essay, uh, that's a special advisor who is heading the, the Minister of uh, um, uh, works and infrastructure. And when we embark on a project, we bring in the Ministry of Environment and everybody plays their role uh, just to ensure that whatever infrastructure that we develop uh, is protected. So um, the Ministry of Environment has a plan uh, in place just to ensure that the drainage system 
and uh, everything around our infrastructure is top notch and it's in place. So for those who live in Aja, when you look at the roundabout that we that, that we've just incorporated, you 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 discover that we first worked on the drainage system before actually implementing that roundabout. So we have a massive project going on in Lagos just to ensure that uh, we can reduce the flood risk and um, and uh, there's a lot of um, education going on as to how I mean people should you know get rid of their waste etc. So there's uh, there, I mean we 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 collaborate with the Minister of Environment. We make sure that when we develop infrastructure like roads, also the drainage is there because your road is only as good as the drainage system that is there. And, uh, and, 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 and together, so what we're developing is an all-encompassing uh, project uh, infrastructure that ensures that when it rains, uh, there, there are ways in which we can disperse water, and then there's a, there are ways in which we can protect our infrastructure. So we're not just building infrastructure for the sake of building it, we're building what we call a resilient infrastructure. So we have a resilient plan in place that takes on board uh, the flooding issues and then other issues um, uh, that might uh, destroy or um, and make, uh, make sure that uh, we don't uh, enjoy the full benefit of the infrastructure that we're developing. Street hawkers, we have a tax force in place. And recently we went to Igbo to shut down the market in Igbo. So, what we, our government is doing is to provide a market for these people to move into. So there's an Oibo market, but it is the people on the road that entice these people to come out and sell their gears. So if we stop uh, people from buying on the road, um, I think we will have done half the job. So we're providing the market for people. We also have punitive measures for people who stop to buy uh, things on the road. Um, it's not, uh, we haven't escalated it to the whole of Lagos uh, yet. Some areas and the tax force team would escalate these measures to ensure that even we ourselves do not patronize these hawkers. And that way they will be forced to move uh, into the places that uh, they, uh, we have provided for them. Now, how have you been able to gather data? Now, one of the biggest problems that I faced when I moved back into Lagos was data. There was, I mean, the, 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 the database that we had was pretty poor. And one of the things that we did, especially in Lagos State, was to embark on a massive collection of tra uh, travel data, transportation data. And at any point in time, we're always collecting data. So we have data on most of our roads uh, we've even moved away from the, uh, uh, you know, the, the loops that we put on the road where you're able to count the number of cars to putting cameras on our gantry and then taking uh, advantage of this non-intrusive method uh, where we're able to capture the radio uh, radioactive uh, wave of your mobile, et cetera, and then we're able to count the number of people that are traveling, et cetera. So there are a lot of technology um, that uh, we are using to actually collect data. Um, we have um, a ministry that is dedicated to collecting data and uh, we're using a full range of technology to actually ensure that we have up-to-date data to give us informed uh, information so that we can make informed decisions and, uh, 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 and make sure that uh, we give people value for money. So, I mean, data collection is something that has improved in Lagos over the last uh, decade. I can tell. If you go to Lamata, one of our agents is responsible for collecting our day, um, traffic data. Um, they will be able to give you uh, data of uh, your aware of Google, et cetera. So there's data everywhere that we use, that we tap into. Uh, and we use those data to make informed decisions. Now, can you capture the banana boats? That's the next question. Uh, yes, so what we're doing, we are reforming the water transport uh, sector also. So um, we want to encourage the local operators to participate in this reform. So what we're doing is we are evaluating their boats. 
We're making sure that it's safe. And uh, some of the subsidy that the government is bringing in into the water uh, sector is, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're investing in a, a lot of uh, infrastructure. Uh, we're investing in the dredging of our waterways and uh, we're making sure that we remove wrecks on our waterways. So these are the things that make waterways unattractive, e expensive, and so indirectly we're subsidizing. And then where we have to um, subsidize an operator, we will look at it on a case by case case, I mean, uh, case and then we'll see what we can do. But at the moment, there's a lot of infrastructure subsidy that is going into water transportation. Uh, the government has even invested in boats just to make sure that uh, we bridge the gap between the demand, the demand and supply. So we will continue to improve on that. We'll continue to improve on our enforcement. And uh, eventually the yellow drivers will go, we'll reform the bus sector and uh, we will continue to provide infrastructure as well as uh, transportation that makes our um, environment greener. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're moving away from um, a situation where we just bring in politicians to run the transport sector and we're moving into an era where experts actually drive the transport sector. So we're not just putting this infrastructure in place for the sake of putting them in place. There is a reason why they're being put in place and they're driving, they're meeting one objective or the other. It could be uh, aiding the economy of Lagos State, it could be reducing uh, envir the environmental pollution in Lagos State, or it could be alleviating poverty. It would be serving one of those three objectives that I can assure you. So let me stop there also. And um, I think uh, time is far Thank you. spent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Aladdin. Wonderful, wonderful response to all those questions. All of them, you really addressed them very well. So I'm going to pass you back on to our chairman, Engineer Tio uh, Odunami, to uh, take it away. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Honorable Commissioner. And um, uh, it's, it's been a delight. I mean, I don't know exactly how to express myself regarding this, but um, what can I say but to say thank you for taking your time out to do it. And um, uh, we need to show our appreciation to uh, people in the house who have honored us with, our, with their presence. I want to start with um, uh, the Honorable Chairman of um, uh, Nigerian Sort of Engineers, Glasgow Branch. Uh, Dr. Shane, are you there, sir? Thank you, thank you for taking your time to be on the webinar. Dr. Shim, are you there? I hope not too cold in uh, Glasgow. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, ah, thank you. Thank you uh, for taking uh, time, thank Doctor. Thank you, Engineer Dulami, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you. And um, also definitely I want to uh, take the indulgence of this opportunity to say thank you to uh, I will continue to call him Shegun, even if he says he doesn't want me to call him doctor. Uh, we we have our way back at uh, Great Ife, Shegun Mati, and uh, we, 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 we've come a long way from the Great Ife days. And um, uh, thank you so much, Shegun, for facilitating this opportunity. Uh, and I think definitely this is um, a, a, a good time for us to start uh, better things going down for the father line. Um, I want to say thank you so much as well for taking your time, all the executives of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, both in Nigeria, both abroad. I may not even know your names on, this, on, the, on the webinar, but um, I really recognize your presence and your support to the London UK branch and uh, most especially uh, our uh, engineer Rose Madaki. We thank you for honoring this particular occasion to, to, to be here. Uh, last but not the least, I just want to say thank you to everybody. But one thing is very, very important. We need to take something out from this because in my own field, which is project management, there's something we call lesson learned, lesson learned. I'm sure definitely after this now, you have a, a, a better perspective of Lagos State. You have a clearer view of where Lagos State is going. I mean, many of us would have more or less kind of been taken aback by what we have been hearing before. But now we have a better view of where Lagos State is and where it is going. Now, it's not for us to just fold our arms. Let's begin to see how we can key into that. And you have a very good pipeline, a very good avenue in Nigerian Center of Engineers, London, UK branch. 
And that is why you have on your chart there a way for us to kind of cooperate and maybe a kind of a gel with us by being, I mean, being a member of, of, our, of our branch. So we can channel all these ideas that are greater, greater things for us with ahead of us. And we're not even going to start stopping on this. We want to have a channel of us to impact what is ha happening back at home, but you need to do it properly. So please, um, the link is still there on our, on our screen there. Let's look at it and please, 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 let's make sure definitely we register to be members of, um, of the London UK branch of NSC and there we can begin to move forward. And then going ahead, going ahead in what we are planning for the year, like I said, our calendar is fully loaded for London UK branch, as I said. Uh, the next one that is coming on is going to be a very, very good one. The picture tells the story you can see on your screen and we are having uh, another female engineer coming to our midst, uh, engineer Ronnie Savage. Uh, Ronnie Savage is a, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Engineers. Wow. Uh, she's also an entrepreneur. She is uh, the uh, owner of um, Engineering and Environmental, Jomas Engineering and Environmental Limited. She's going to be talking to us about opportunities in ground engineering uh, with a particular reference on reclamation of the brownfield land. If any one of you has an idea of brown feed land, we know it's a, it's a webinar you don't want to miss. And for those who don't have that idea, just Google brown feed land. You know exactly where what is happening. It's a very, very good topic coming on board. And after that, that will be on the 6th of February. That will be on the 6th of February at uh, the same time. And um, definitely, I want us to take this opportunity to begin to think ahead. Think ahead of what we are doing. Think ahead of what we have in store. Think ahead of what we have done so far and begin to cooperate with us at NSC London UK branch. I want to say thank you for the Honorable Commissioner for taking his time. Thank you for all the facilitators and thank you as well all for all our members on board. Uh, we had a peak, a, a peak representation at 100, 100 people on this webinar today at the peak. And that was when even the lecture was, the, the webinar was, still, the lecture was still going on. That was impressive. And um, we want to more or less kind of um, let everyone know that apart from London UK branch, the Glasgow branch also, they are having a series of affiliate webinars coming on board. And then we believe that as time goes on, we'll be able to kind of incorporate them in. Thank you so much for coming. And I believe we keep, we keep the questions rolling. And as we keep on asking these questions, we, we, you've, got, you've got the details for the London UK brand there. If you want to get in touch with us, get in touch with me, get it up to the P, and we can more or less kind of do stuff together. We want as many hands as possible to do the best for our fatherland. The time is not then, but it is now. Thank you for coming and have a safe journey for those who are traveling. And for those who are not going anywhere in lockdown like me, take a cup of tea and relax, watch TV. God bless you. Right. If everybody want to put their video on, we just want to get a good pictures here, please. If you have your video or your pictures on, uh, put your best part of your face on, please. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Doctor. Fantastic. Fantastic. I can see so many faces here. That is fantastic. <laughs> I can see so many faces. You're all yes, welcome. Sir. Fantastic. One minute. One minute. And so oh, Engineer Tony Ajala, you're welcome. Oh. Ah, how Thank you. you. Kaisings. Kaisings, how are you doing? You OK? Thank unmute you, yourself. Doctor. Can everybody unmute, please? Let's say hello. Let's say hello. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. Dr. Popola. Thank yeah. you very much okay. for bringing this forward. <laughs> engineer, Engineer Ajala, how are you? I'm fine, oh. Still at work. <laughs> <laughs> ah, today. Why? Yeah, well, things have to go on for some of us. Anyway, it's all right, but stay away from us now. Tell you me, no Fayo, how are you doing? Doc, Doc, well done, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Can I log off now? Yes, you can. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you Honorable okay. Commissioner. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, I said I left my number for you on the P chat. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I'll, I'll All right. Have a good one, guys. Well done. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Take Thank care. you. Take care. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Keep in touch, Nee. Shola, I can see you. Shola, can you just say hello? That's my cousin there. Shola, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Fantastic. Shola, Shola happens to be a, a, a wonderful architect, a wonderful, wonderful architect. So I dragged him now to come and say, to come and uh, say hello. It's not, it's not going to be a wonderful architect unless he's a member of London branch. He, don't well, worry. As I've told him now, he's already a member. Don't worry. He's a poor architect too. <laughs> yeah. Shagu Mati, are you still on the call? Yes, uh, I'm still on. I'm still on. I'm still on. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I, welcome. I, it's my yes. honor and pleasure, but I'll need to put this straight here. The doctor had to actually pull himself out to get this on. We are yeah. very, very busy this time. Mm. Thank, Thank you December very much. Tomorrow. Yeah, it was so, an excellent, it was an excellent one. Yes. Thank you very much for your so effort. So yeah. I'm just trying to portray what Lagos actually is for everybody to see mm. what's actually going on. It's a lot and a lot of work to do to mm. get Lagos mm. moving. Even if it's a bit, yeah. it involves mm -hmm. a lot. Mm, it right? does, it does. Infrastructure, transport now, hopefully you see environment, and then the drainage service to coming up to like, I mean, to come lecture us mm -hmm. or give us an insight into what Lagos is about and the infrastructure mm -hmm. in place and what they're trying to do. It's a massive job. Yes, well, 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 well done. done. Yeah. Getting Lagos State to sponsor this webinar for us, though, because there's a lot <laughs> going on today on Lagos State, too. Abi, that would be a good idea, honestly. Once we know what they're all about. While we're, talking, while we're talking, I was contacted by uh, uh, SSA in Kwara State, uh, Mr. Yeah. Kaode Oyuzubao, and he said he wants us to come to Kwara State and do this kind of webinar. They are ready to sponsor us. So if the Kwara State is doing that and they're one of the very low states in Nigeria, I think Lagos State could do better. And Lagos, Lagos, Lagos is already Lagos would do grand. better. Yeah. Provided we can showcase to you what you intend to bring into Lagos. And that's why I'm trying to do this, really show us in diaspora what Lagos entails. Yeah, we, we got we got <laughs> so the message. Cool. Just just let it let the ball start to roll so the other state can benefit as well. Because when Lagos, when Lagos state sneezes, every other state cash go. Yeah, that, that's starting already. And, 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 and um, I don't, I, I just want to chip in something here on behalf of the uh, London UK branch. Uh, we, we don't want to only limit it to uh, Lagos State as well. So you can see definitely Quara is beckoning now. Also, if you, if anyone has any contact with other states, we want to bring this kind of um, uh, fantastic innovation. We want to bring it uh, down to other states okay. as well all over the country. And I uh, thank can you. Uh, Sorry to cut you. I'll probably get to go on board as well, Ogun State, and probably part of your. Absolutely. Yeah, we've, got, we've, got one, we've got a guy from Ogun State talking a few weeks' time. Yeah, because Absolutely. we want to know what all these states is doing and how yeah, we, can, yeah. we can be involved and, and help and contribute to the development in anything, infrastructure, anything to do with engineering. We have skilled up people in the UK and in diaspora. They are ready to return something back to Nigeria. So this is the opportunity to really, to really pick our brain and, and get us to, to do work with you. Mm -hmm. Fine, good. Doctor, you know, basically that's a passion. We need to actually see what is going on here. I can know how I can contribute from diaspora. If we don't right. know it, it's not really open for us to know what's going on. We need to see what the problem is and then see what people are trying to contribute. Then we can, from our own experience over there, see where we can have an input. Mm -hmm. Like Dr. Honorable Coach I mentioned, when he came into, he had to see what the problem is. And then from there, developed the infrastructure that takes him to where he is now and where the can get forward to. So is that the process? We need to know what's actually on ground. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, I'm sure drainage will come in soon from Lagos. And then you can actually see what this issue about flooding and flooding and flooding in Lagos is about and what is mm -hmm. being done. Mm -hmm. And I believe the person in drainage will come to make good that kind of, that particular aspect of Lagos and the flooding issues. And also, also so, why Chegun is still on that topic, um, we, 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 the idea of getting us to be members of NSC is to have a pool of expertise to address all these problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. once we once we can come together, we have a database of various kind of experiences here and there. 
that we have a pool of experiences whereby not only are we highlighting problems in states, they're also proffering solutions. Because we have people that, because the watchword of NSC London UK branch, it is this is doable. If we can do it here, definitely it, we can do it anywhere. But then we need to have that pool of expertise, so have that pool of experienced people who can do the job. That is why we are more or less kind of employing us to come on board, get ourselves registered, and let, let's begin to talk. Let's begin to talk. Dr. P is always available. I'm always available. We operate open door, open door access for anything and inclusion. So please feel free to get in touch with us. Yeah. Engineer Thompson, I can see I can see you there. How are you doing? <laughs> Engineer Tony Ajala, I'm still loyal. I've not disappeared. <laughs> I've not really disappeared, though. <laughs> those are the those are the great fathers of transportation. <laughs> Hello, Ingina Shagun. How are you doing? Exactly. Uh, well, I'm coping on a one. It's uh, it's, it's a lot there. Yeah, it's a lot there. Yeah, I'm coping on. <laughs> I'm being pulled. Maya thank you for coming. Yo. I've just noticed your name on board. Uh, yes, uh, Engineer Detiba, thank you for coming. Engineer Detiba, I've been there. I didn't, I didn't notice that. Sorry about that. Yeah, I would have acknowledged yeah, your presence. Yeah. You're welcome, oh. Actually, you mentioned about Ogun State, uh, Dr. Okopola. We have yes. somebody there, you know, Dr. Um, uh, Mr. Adebo, uh, what's his name? Boyga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming on board. Yeah. Yeah, please, so let's get him on board. Benga Benga Dairo, 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 definitely. Dairo. Yeah, it's coming on board. It's coming on board. It's 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 brilliant for law. NSA London doing all this to showcase Nigeria for the diaspora and see where we can contribute in our own different forms going forward down the line. Nigeria can improve technologically and infrastructure wise. I believe that. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Tegun, please, engineer Soda Inde, we need to chase him down, please. Should I just both match? That's sealed. I'm huh? working on. Um, oh, please, because it's on, it's on, on the twentieth. March, I believe. It's on the twentieth. No, it's on the twentieth of February. Second, is it February? That's what I want to okay, okay. Yeah, twentieth, twentieth of February, please. Okay, okay. Is yeah. it? Okay, I'll I'll get back to your name. I'll get back yeah, to your we, name. We need to get for the top, uh, uh, because of the big difficult. Okay, okay. I'll get back to you probably. Before the end of January on him, I'll show you that. Thank In you. Go, are you yes. listening to me? Um, yes. What, one thing we want to raise is uh, not about new infrastructure. We want to talk about maintenance. Whatever infrastructure you have, we still need to maintain it. Like DFT in those days when I joined them, they have 15 years rehabilitation program for the maintenance. So as you have this plan, 20 years plan, you know, you need to have the same thing for the maintenance. So let's start looking into maintenance. How do we maintain those roads? How do we maintain those infrastructure? Mm, mm, uh, how do we have a re point. rehabilitation program for all our old good roads? Point. Good point. You know, good maintenance point. is it's, it's a bit of a problem in this country. Exactly. The, one of the reasons for that is because basically in engineering, I mean, allow me to just say this. In engineering, maintenance is part of the, is part of the bulk part of, of infrastructure solution. However, from my experience while in Nigeria and outside, what I can say is, is by the time you bring in your maintenance package into your projects, the political will may not allow you. That's what happens there. So you need to understand this. And then factor in how can maintenance be well deferred. That means you have something more structurally strong or yeah. um, that's actually a little maintenance stuff. And that's why in the works ministry, we are trying to get into actually having rigid pavement roads, concrete roads. That's one of the things we're trying to do. Once they combine to that, maintenance which takes a longer time than having a flexible road. So these are the things we need to understand the culture here because political will tell you there is no funds, there's no funds when you're talking of maintenance. So the next thing is you want to do something new than going to maintenance of the old thing, because, uh, because an area has not actually benefited anything. Oh, you are talking about maintenance of an old thing. They will tell you, no, no, no. We are going to the next place to do something for them. So we need to kind of understand the, the culture here and be able to design around it, to have a fair engineering package 
on infrastructures for the populace. Because, yeah, like you, basically, because basically, there are many areas there from the government at all. So we need to. Yeah, we're working on this. The more like we get into the system, we understand how to incorporate maintenance into the system. That's what I can deduce from my experience there. Actually, a commissioner told me with his mouth that does maintenance pay in Nigeria? I don't know what he meant by that. Sorry. But does maintenance pay Sorry. in Nigeria? Yeah, because there's a part of the reason for that is this. Let me give you. When you come with a new project, the cost is high because it's fairly new. When you come with maintenance on the same thing about down the line, maybe 15, 20 years, it's like a particular area has not have gotten this kind of road. You are talking about it. So it won't be entertained. They want to do that new one in other places. So we need to understand the orientation and the cultural thing here to be able to see how infrastructure projects can come into the system in a way that the masses will benefit more on the longer run. Huh? Anyway, I well, think, I think now with the virtual thing that we're doing, we are, we are saying more, we're opening this more to everybody to see what's actually going on. And I can really give kudos to the other request of transformation of what he has actually highlighted. By the time you combine this with what my SA works gave in September, you've seen more of what Lagos is all about. And where we actually need to, to put our friends together and see how we can help the state or the country going forward to what we have in um, climbs abroad. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, so, thank uh, you very much for that. I, I can see some of us are still on the on the uh, on the webinar. This is not the end. It's not. It's not. It's not cast in stone. Let's let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna stop recording so that we don't. Uh, yeah, that's okay. fine. We don't give anything away. Okay. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep uh, the ideas flowing. And again, definitely, let's begin to kind of sniff out people that we know definitely can. Um, can bring stuff on board. You know, people have been so much kind of um, scared away by, oh, it's not going to work. Oh, this is Nigeria. Oh, this is corruption. Oh, this is. But you know what? Let's create a sense of belief that look, things.